What's up? Ghost Fictions is here, and we're back again. This is the first part of a story where Izuku became the shadow hero. Accidentally hit by All Might when protecting Kitsumi from the sludge villain. Izuku enters a six-month coma and finds out he has an RPG quirk or that what he thought until the job change quest. An organized mess depicting the struggles and the power of one Izuku Midoriya. But before we start, please consider subscribe to the channel and give this video a like. Don't forget to check the description for more information. Now, let's get into part 1. Kitsumi Bakugo couldn't breath. She went with her underlings after trying to get her childhood friend to quit being a hero by some unspeakable methods, i.e. saying to jump of a roof. Yeah, her plan on making Izuku Midori or Deku as she called him stop being a hero. But how could she protect him in the future, her plan was to marry him after, but how could she say that after all of the things she had done to him? Kitsumi's plan was making Izuku help her with her own agency or stay-at-home husband. What is worse is seeing him running to her and trying to save her, wait, wait, wait. Izuku is coming to save me. Shit. Shit. Whilst the young man tried to claw her out and eventually got her in a grip and pulled her out, he then pushed her behind him. What she saw next will give her nightmares, All Might coming in and punching the villain, but when Izuku pushed Kitsumi behind him, he was in a line of fire of All Might's punch. The four smashed him in a wall, causing him to bleed from his head and eventually make him unconscious with only two words she heard him mutter, I accept then things for him gone black. The next thing the ash blonde done was run to Izuku trying to wake him up whilst shouting at the stunned All Might. Later whilst she was praised by the heroes with them trying to badmouth Izuku, she shouted to them to do something as her Izuku was bleeding and they did nothing to help her, but it was her nerd that did something. A quirkless childhood friend, her crush since she could remember. She knew it will become worse for him as he has no living relatives in Japan, additionally his dad was an asshole for her. He was working in USA and visits during summers. All she could do was wait and pray for him to heal well. Izuku during this time. Izuku also didn't have a good day. Kitsumi Bakugo or to him Kakin, up until today that was when she said to take a swan dive of the roof to get a quirk during the next life, with her throwing his notebook out of the window. Then he was attacked by a sludge villain and saved by All Might. When he asked All Might if a quirkless person could become a hero he denied it and also accidentally shown him his small form due to Izuku jumping onto the 8th user's legs. He really considered to jump there and then, his mother died due to a villain attack and his father was in America sending him money to live. Honestly his father was the only one keeping him alive, he loved his father especially visiting him during summertime. When walking down he heard an explosion. Feeling his feet taking him to the sound, he sighed and continued. There was a crowd with some heroes standing there except one which was controlling water to stop the fires from spreading. When seeing his childhood friend in pain from her eyes, he moved. He didn't know what to do, but he threw his backpack at the sludge villain and started to claw out his bully. Once seeing her arm, he pulled her behind him to protect her from the inevitable attack from the villain. But what he didn't expect was All Might coming and punching the villain away with himself too. Slamming head first to the wall, thinking of how he wanted to live, he saw a message. Alarm. You have completed all the necessary requirements of the secret quest courage of the week. What's this? Secret quest. Completed all the requirements. He asked in his mind. Alarm. You have completed all the necessary requirements of the secret quest courage of the week. You have earned the right to become a player. Will you accept? Player? What's going on? Izuku started to wonder more. You do not have much time remaining. If you refuse, your heart will stop approximately 0.02 seconds later. Will you accept? Accept refuse. If I accept, I don't have to die. Then with a weak voice, he muttered, I accept. Then the one mentioned went into a comma for the foreseeable future. Welcome player. Time skip six month. The time Izuku woke up was like a bang, firstly he inspected himself, then asked himself was this a dream? He still continued to pant and sweat. I think it was. Yeah, how could he unlock a quirk after 15 years? Then a nurse came and they started small talk like how long and what happened. Apparently he was in a coma for six months, oh great, what about my apartment? When she left Izuku asked himself once again. Could it be that she can't see it? What he is talking about was a blue screen above him. Message. You have one unread mail. Damn, my head hurts, are those phantom pain from the hit? After a couple of minutes of trying to calm his head down, the green at thought whilst looking at the blue boat can I touch it? After his finger fading through it guess it's not a touch screen. Hmm, open mail. Welcome player, one unread message. Daily quest. Preparing to become strong has arrived. The system will help the player's growth. If he fails to obey the system's orders there may be a penalty. Your rewards have arrived. What is it telling me to do? Rewards. Quest. This feels similar to the notification after the sludge villain Izuku mused to himself internally. Daily quest. 
Preparing to become strong has arrived, unread. Prepare to become strong. Check. Quest directions. Daily quest getting ready to become powerful. Goal. Incomplete, push up 0 100. Incomplete, curl up 0 100. Incomplete, sit up 0 100. Incomplete, squat 0 100. Incomplete, run 0 10 km. Warning. Failing to complete this daily quest will bring a punishment associated with this quest. Haha, <laughs> what is this a joke? I don't have enough strength to do it today. I will start to do it tomorrow. Izuku whispered to himself. Warning. Failing to complete this daily quest will bring a punishment associated with this quest. The time was ticking with Izuku sleeping like a baby. Time skip midnight. Alarm. You have not completed the daily quest. You are now heading towards the penalty zone for a certain period of time. The earthquake Izuku screamed out. He then realized that his hospital bed turned into sand. Looking around he saw himself on a sandy area where a sunset is occurring. Realizing that something is moving, the sand dunes to be exact. Sweating at the looks of it, he saw a dark red name above the centipede monster thing. Poison Fang Giant Sand Centipede. Quest Directions. Penalty Quest. Survive. Bowl. Survive until the time runs out. Time required. 4 hours. Time remaining. 3h, 59 min 59 sec. Time remaining. 3h, 59 min 58 sec. Time remaining. 3h, 59 min 57 sec. Gulping down his fear, he looked at the drawling image of a centipede with sharp teeth, with a long red tound licking its lips. You gotta be kidding me with him using a secret move he was practicing for 11 years, running away. Some time later. Ah was the sound that Izuku was producing whilst he was running away. Why you may ask, simple. There are 12 large centipedes behind him trying to make the gamer into their meal. When he thought he was going to die. Penalty quest. Survive. Bowl. Survive until the timer runs out. Time required. 4 hours. Time remaining. 0 h, 0 min 4 sec. Time remaining. 0 h, 0 min 3 sec. Time remaining. 0 h, 0 min 2 sec. Time remaining. 0 h, 0 min 1 sec. Alarm. You have completed the penalty quest. This was the moment he was teleported out of the desert into his hospital room. Seeing the same alert, he muttered penalty quest. Your rewards for completing the penalty quest have arrived. Would you like to accept? Accept refuse. But that our 15-year-old protagonist fainted. He was later on found by a nurse that got him onto his bed, which caused some shock due to the sand that was found on the ground. Time skip one week. A couple of nurses were commenting about young Izuku Midoriya health, he was seen doing his daily run. The next day the greenette started to do his exercises, and today was his seventh day of doing this exercise. First thing first, the blue box in front of his eyes were not an illusion. It was an actual messaging system from the system. Alarm. Complete, running 10 kilometers. 10 10 kilometers. You have completed your daily quest. You received the following rewards. Reward 1. Status recovery. Reward 2. Stat points plus 3. Reward 3. Random box plus 1. Will you accept? Accept reject. Accept all with it a golden light encompass the green net and all of his fatigue has left. This was the second thing, the so-called system was similar to a quirk, but with some kind of magic. He theorized that he could store the status recovery for the physical day. You have received the random box. This was an interesting development, after every daily he got a random box. Apparently, it can give him anything, but the probability is low for higher. Random, box rarity scale. Junk. 90%. E. 9%. E. 0.9%. C. 0.09%. E. 0.009%. A. 0.0009%. S. 0.0009%. S plus. 0.0001%. During the week, Izuku received 6 junk and 1 D rank item which was a sword that gave him a plus 10 in strength. The junk item today was a Maruko pen. A useful item if you think about it, he wouldn't need to spend 180 yen for a pen. Talking about strength, the new gamer discovered his status. Where he could level up by some means and get a job. Status. Name. Izuku Midoriya. Job. None. Title. None. Level. 1. Fatigue. 0. HP. 160. MP. 35. Strength. 16. Agility. 13. Sense. 13. Vitality. 13. Intelligence. 13. Remaining points. 3. He experimented with all of the abilities, but in general he thought he will need to maximize all stats, so he can enter UA in less than 4 months time. 
strength is pretty straightforward, the one with the most visible improvement. At 10 points, he could hardly lift his bed up. But when he made it to 13, it was easier to pick it up with two hand. He also realized that strength is used in speed, how fast you can run. Agility is how flexible one can be. At 10 Izuku could feel more agile, but increasing allowed him to be a little faster moving in air, but on ground too. This also helps with reflexes as he had noted down. Sense is probably the second easiest to explain. It allows you to feel where someone or something is even if not visible. It enhanced Izuku's senses, such as smell, touch, hearing, taste, eyesight and bloodlust sensing, as he discovered walking around. Some people naturally produce bloodlust he guesses, but it is still weak compared to the other senses. Vitality is there to improve your health by increasing your HP bar. The bigger the HP, the lower the chance for you not to die as fast as he could with a lower HP. He theorizes that with a bigger HP more damage he could take. Intelligence was the hardest for Izuku to see what it does. It increases MP or also known as mana, but also the ability to multitask and think fast increases. Additionally, he could remember more, causing him to think that he is slowly gaining photographic memory. There was a lot of theorizing, but as he could analyze a quirk he did it on himself to see what he could improve on. He had three remaining points, so he gave two to sense and one to agility. Lower down he found that he has a couple of skills. Skills. Passive. Unknown, max. Muscularity, LV.1. Active. Sprint, LV.1. He had achieved muscularity and sprint during the penalty zones. He had no idea what the unknown does though, but its level is maxed out. Lastly, he found out that there are so-called dungeons. He received it by a random box reward from the penalty zone. Item. Dungeon key. Item class. E. Type. Key. The key that allows you to create an instant dungeon. You may use this in the entrance to the station near Airjet's hero agency. So after being allowed to leave for a couple of hours for business by the hospital. He headed straight to the Airjet's hero agency, so he could enter his first gate. First person Izuku. It was a week after I woke up from my coma. I became a little nervous, but due to the gamer's mind I calmed down a bit. I was one of the weakest in the world before my awakening, other people would laugh at me if they heard what I am about to do. What would Kakanokatsumi think about me? Never mind her actually. I muttered slowly to himself. I was going to do it obviously as I am standing just outside the station right now. I am comfortable in my ability to run, especially with my sprint skill. So if it becomes too dangerous I will run away. I then plunged the key in midair, causing a small blue portal to appear. Walking through it, I received a notification. Alarm. You have entered the instant dungeon. I became confused, are there different dungeons? Then I realized the exit just closed. No way, the entrance got closed. I saw a person near me, but he walked through it. Is this some other dimension? Breathing out slowly, I muttered, I need to get stronger, so I can show them a Deku like me can become the strongest. Alarm. You cannot leave the dungeon. Either kill the boss or use the return crystal. I can't leave before I kill the boss. Damn then I heard a noise. Footsteps to be more precise. If it wasn't for the system, I would have definitely shit my pants. What I saw was three zombie-like creatures with weapons. Their speed wasn't impressive, so I rushed at one and punched it. I didn't expect that only the left arm of one was flown off. Expecting for the zombie to be in pain, I lowered my guard a little, but my body moved on its own again but backward. Damn. I then looked at the name. It was orange and it read. Weaponized zombie. Some concentration went to the reading of the name, so I didn't have much time to sense the other two zombies. Cursing again, I jumped over them and kicked the floor whilst I was flying down to create a minor crater. I quickly took out my sword that I received from the random box. Item. Steel blade. Item class. D. Type. Sword. Plus 10 attack. Smirking, I went again and this time cut one of the zombies in half. Thanking any deity above for the luck of the draw. You have defeated the weaponized zombie. You leveled up. Bam, two more to go. With that I dodged a slash from one of them, and made a comeback slash through the middle. I hope I can get used to killing those monsters. Dodging a spear strike from the last one, I made a diagonal slash through the body of the zombie killing it. You have defeated the weaponized zombie x2. You leveled up. Wow, usually in games there are things to collect. I wondered, looking through the three dead zombies I found three broken weapons, three rotten flesh. Item. Weaponized zombies flesh. Item class. None. Type. Junk. A piece of flesh from a zombie. You can keep it in your inventory or sell it in the store. There is a store too I'm used to myself. I sell. Damn, what can I buy? Alarm. Your level is not enough to buy from the store. Looks like new players can't use this function I sighed in disappointment. 
Would you like to sell, item? Weaponized Zami's flesh. Sell cancel. Yes. When putting in the flesh I received 15 gold per flesh. Hmm, 45 gold for the three. Leaving the broken weapons I'm used, this is an E rank dungeon, I wonder how much an A or an S rank junk item would sell for. The broken weapons of that quality gave me zero gold, so that is why I left them. What do I do now? Taking in a deep breath I could leave when I got a return crystal. Then I slapped my soul, no, I need to get stronger, I don't know when I can get a key again. No bad thoughts Izuku, you will not die from the boss. I thought at the end. Spotting Atlas 20 glowing red eyes from the zombies, I weakly smirked, bring it on. With that call, the zombies began to come closer whilst some throwing daggers, spears at me. Due to me putting points. I already died before, by all might. Being attacked by the sludge villain was way scarier than you all, with it I began slashing, dodging and killing the zombies. I won't die that easily. So you all shouldn't die too easily either, or I'll feel sorry. Fight fearfully, no hesitation I thought to myself, continuing as much as my body can endure. You leveled up. Suddenly I got cut over my left arm, hissing in pain I endured and killed the zombie that cut me. You leveled up. If I die, then what was the point of living? I will succeed to become the number one hero. Fatigue. 34. You leveled up. Finishing taking care of those 20 zombies, I took a break to lower my fatigue. When it came down to 16 I walked further in and saw and more weaponized zombies with a different kind of zombie mixed in. Archer zombies. Alarm. You have earned, title. Zombie slayer. Your stats will increase by 20% when facing a dead opponent such as zombies. You also gain 40% more experience killing dead opponents. Status. Name. Izuku Midoriya. Job. None. Idol. Zombie Slayer. Level. 5. Fatigue. 16. HP. 660. MP. 100. Strength. 21. Agility. 19. Sense. 20. Vitality. 18. Intelligence. 18. Remaining points. 0. Bring it on I said with a more confident smile. Their names started to turn lighter orange than white. There were a couple of different zombies, however my level isn't rising. I realized that the colors indicate the level of difficulty. White ones mean they are weak. Orange means they are strong, should be slightly above my level. Red means they are very strong. Since the zombies were orange at the beginning and now they are white, it means I have become quite a bit stronger. Level 15. But even with my current level, I am not sure if I can beat that guy down there I muttered, also I received a return crystal from a zombie drop. Item. Return crystal. Item class. Type. Crystal. The return crystal allows you to leave instant dungeons, if not used then it will be automatically deleted after finishing the dungeon. I can't stop here getting some metiption I started to walk down the stairs where I was hit with a burned flesh smell of some kind. Suddenly something came at me with ferocious speed. Fast that's the only logical thought I had whilst blocking with my chipped sword. The punch caused me to get smashed against a wall with me spitting some blood out. Coughing out a bit, I realized my sword is broken in two. I thought I leveled up quite a bit, but I was wrong. Whilst looking up, I saw the name with the color of dark orange. Undead ruler, Rocket the Ghoul. Thinking quickly as I don't want to be eaten by a ghoul, I jumped to the left thinking of a plan. The skin looks really tough, slashed and punches won't have much or any effect it lunged at me, whilst still dodging I tried to see if my theory was correct with punches. I smirked when there was a tiny crack in the skin, meaning my theory was disproven yes, it worked, but barely. I need to weaken this guy to defeat it. It came back with more speed and punched me again, I luckily blocked it, but I thought I might die if this continues. It took me an extra 2 minutes to actually get a hit in, but I wasn't doing too well on my part. My health was low and fatigue is getting higher. Fatigue. 47. HP. 851,860. One reason I added points to intelligence was due to one skill sprint. Skill sprint, active. Uses 50 MP to start then uses 1 MP per minute it used. The total speed increases by 30%. Activating sprint, I surprised the boss enough for me to stab the broken sword in the eye. Whilst it was thrashing, I went behind it and latched onto the neck. Using my strength I decided to crush its breathing option. I need to become stronger so I won't be seen as useless. More thrashing happened, but when the boss made me hit the wall, I nearly let the monster go. Digging my fingers in further, the ghoul coughed up some green blood. With a shout of die, the windpipe was crushed causing it to die. In the hospital, no more Izuku Pav. Izuku Midoriya still isn't back yet. A doctor asked. Yes, he went out in the morning the receptionist nurse replied. Why isn't he returning even after sunset? 
Apparently he had business in town, but he's also recovered a lot and will be discharged soon. The nurse dutifully replied. Does he have some sort of regeneration quirk? We should stabilize him indoors. The doctor frowned at that. In our system, it says he is quirkless. But I guess from the near-death experience he could have unlocked one. I guess, I will call the association to check the quirk factor. The doctor replied still frowning. But Izuku, third person. You leveled up. You leveled up. You leveled up. Breathing heavily, Izuku sat against the ghoul. I guess I got a bit stronger. Ha I am beginning to feel like a hunter. Alarm. You have slain undead ruler, rocket the ghoul. Oh, it dropped two items the greenet mused to himself. Item. Rocket blood. Item class. A. Type. Potion. The pouch that contains rocket purified blood. Obtainable by defeating rocket. Unlikely drop rate. Drinking it will give you harder skin and pain nullification, but will weaken your agility. Effect rocket rock skin. Minus 10% physical damage taken. Effect rocket pain nullifier. Minus 15% pain felt. Deb of weakened movement. Minus 25, agility. Item. Rocket gauntlet. Item class. C. Type. Gauntlet. Attack. Plus 15. Defense. Plus 5%. Gauntlet that can cover your right hand. It is perfect for attack and defense. It has a slight paralyzing effect due to leftover ghoul's blood. Grants contagious effect. Can be equipped, stored or sold. Effect paralyze. Attacked foes have a chance of having their limb unable to move. Effect contagious. If gauntlets touch a bleeding area, the area of effect will cause the attack spot to be contaminated. Causes 1% lose of their health per 1 second. The gauntlet sounds pretty cool, I wonder if I can get a dagger too. Izuku mused. But compared to rocket blood it is awkward to use. I'll store it for now. Alert. The boss has been slain. The dungeon's interior will revert to normal. And I am back at the station Izuku muttered. He realized that his clothes are cut, so he changed it with a cloak that he received from a zombie. But what caught him off was that there was no people around. Walking out of the station someone asked Izuku, who are you? A policeman with a cat's face asked who the greenet is, how did you come out from there? Didn't you hear the broadcast? The Midoriya's eyes widen in surprise, what happened? He didn't realize it yet, but Izuku didn't look like a 15-year-old scrawny kid, but at least a 17-year-old with a good amount of muscle. It could mean that the person in front was just young looking for a hero. Huh, what are you saying now? The policeman realized I had a gauntlet in one hand, he asked, could you be a hero? Izuku wanted to say yes, but when accidentally gave a nod, he pulled the gamer and said, this way, I will guide you sir hero. Ah okay. But internally the newest hunter freaked out thinking don't I look 15. But when Izuku saw himself he nearly had his god dropped, I see, I could always look young for a hero. But what happened? The street was wrecked, cars thrown into building and a couple of heroes fighting the large villain. Due to Izuku's sense stat, he could feel that it was a D-low C-rank villain with a gigantification quirk. The heroes were trying to do anything and everything but it wasn't working. The police were trying to get the civilians out of the area. However the civilians were complaining due to the length of the fight. There were multiple heroes, Backdraft, Kamui Woods, Death Arms and Airjet. They could have easily defeat the villain if Airjet lifted Kamui for him to use his chain move. Oh well when he saw the villain about to smash backdraft, so he got a broken pipe from the ground and cocked his arm back. He threw it, it somehow hit the forehead of the villain, causing it to go backwards and go unconscious. A small smirk appeared on his face thinking I think I got a little stronger. You have defeated a villain with gigantification quirk. You leveled up. Sadly Izuku didn't see one curious face of a new hero, which was about to enter and help defeat the villain, and one face that was angry, happy, curious, just a face only a mother could love. When the heroes and police asked who was it, the cat policeman wanted to point to the man he kinda dragged, but he was gone. One hero Kamui Woods thought he must have been a high-ranking hero to do it. Honestly, Kamui could have gotten Airjet to pick him up, but he couldn't ask easily, his pride maybe. For the next week Izuku continued to do his daily quests, he only had around 16 weeks until the UA entrance exam. Izuku grown to be 5'10", and with a more muscular build, but more orientated to a swimmer's build concentrated on speed due to his points, especially in speed. After finishing his run he had a shower and was waiting to be discharged. During this time, he added the three extra points to strength. His stats looked like this. Strength. 48. Agility. 36. Sense. 35. Vitality. 35. Intelligence. 33. He realized that leveling up is more efficient, compared to doing the daily quest, as just in 3 hours he gained 18 points per stat from the previous dungeon. 
Suddenly a nurse came and told him he is free to leave, but was stopped by two men who were apparently with the Hero Commission. Hello Izuku Midoriya, my name Ryuta Yasugi and my partner is Kaisha Visor. Both of us are here to check your quirk factor. Ryuta spoke up, both men were shorter than Izuku, and were wearing black suits. Nodding, Izuku was taken to a separate room with the two men. If you are wondering, yes I do have a quirk, but I am still working out the kinks of it. Placing a quirk factor detector, Kaisha spoke up. I can sense it, my quirk allows me to have a minor inside of a quirk. But firstly put your hand on the crystal. When a number was there, Kaisha hummed. You do seem to have a powerful quirk factor, I presume you have awakened it during the sludge attack. Receiving a nod of understanding, I can sense an adaption type mixed in with something else, but I cannot tell you what it is as I don't know. Sighing inside the brain of one Izuku Midoriya, Ryuta continued, we will place the name adapter, but it will have an ability to expand when you find more uses. Izuku bowed thank you both. Receiving a nod, Izuku went home. Thank god that they didn't figure it's an RPG quirk, but I still wonder where and how I got it. So far I would say I am at least a D rank level, hopefully I can get higher before UA. I need to become stronger to actually show my quirk. During the time he was exercising he also found a C-rank dungeon key, which will be extremely useful. The downside was that he didn't know where to open it. Later that night. After going home, he decided to go on a walk to pass the time. Izuku was in an area where limelight heroes don't patrol due to Izuku being in his thoughts. A group of six people approached Izuku to gang up on him. Suddenly the key activated on his own, sucking all seven people in. What? Don't tell me this is the area. Izuku asked himself, and who are you guys? Alert. You are in a dungeon. The leader called to regain his posture, hey kid, the hell are we? Rubbing the back of his head cheapishly, Izuku said sorry, I guess my quirk activated on its own. Basically we are in a dungeon similar to video games. We have to defeat the boss to leave here. Another one asked, so we can use our quirks as we want. Sounding pretty excited. Basically, we have to kill the monsters that appear. Though inside Izuku was worried, how the hell did this happen? When Izuku heard some fast-moving monsters he yelled guys, they are coming. When everyone was in position, they were looking around, then Izuku yelled again above us. The monsters were lizard type of things. He read the name in the inside of his head. They had a light orange color to the name. Four-eyed lizard. Hunching one then another was a good idea as it was an instant kill. He looked back at the group of six and they were doing pretty good. Fireballs, a shield and swords cutting the lizards. Izuku killed a couple more and saw the notifications. You have defeated four-eyed lizard x5. You leveled up. After clearing that area, the group walked forward and saw a graveyard full of mutilated lizards. Gulping fire fear they walked further. It is the boss room, get ready. Izuku stated. But they walked into a room filled with blue crystals. The six were filled with excitement, but when they walked a bit forward they met the boss. It was sleeping on the floor. It was a massive dinosaur-type lizard with eight eyes and sharp teeth. They backed back a bit with Izuku staying in place. They all grinned, one of the men used his fireball quirk and blown the roof separating them from Izuku so they could get the blue crystals. Izuku cursed in his mind, realizing that it would be better to defeat the boss now and deal with them later he set to action. The name was Dark Orange and it said. 8 IT Rex. Let's do it. Izuku rushed forward using his gained speed from his strength. Sadly punching it with his gauntlet wasn't easy, the skin was once again hard, similar to the ghoul he faced a week ago. My level is currently 20, a C-rank boss, is doable. This time using the skill sprint, the additional 30% surprised a T-rex, causing Izuku to punch the back of its neck, causing the area to bleed. Effect contagious has been activated, 8i T-rex horsepower will reduce 1% per second. Effect paralysis has been cancelled, the enemy is resistant to paralysis. Bam, only contagious. With a weakened body, the T-rex couldn't dodge the punch to the side of its head. It was smashed onto a wall, presumably having over 50% of its HP down. 8i T-Rex is now using the skill survival of the fittest, the enemy statistics go up by plus 10 for the next minute. Am bro. With that the T-Rex used its tail to smash Izuku to the other side of the room. My HP had fallen down by 320, I need to figure out how to increase my damage reduction. The next minute of Izuku's life was punishing, apparently the T-Rex speed increased to over 50, luckily Sen saved him a bit most of the time. He just realized that he needs to increase his strength more. After the minute Izuku made a small sigh of relief that was for nothing as. 8i T-Rex is now using the skill call of the Alpha, the Alpha, called the 4i Lizards, and the 6i Lizards to help it defeat you. Once again cursing, he saw a lot of eyes glowing red. The T-Rex went back probably to regain some of its strength, so it meant Izuku needed to defeat the white 4i Lizards and the light orange 6i Lizards. 
Using his gauntlet and natural punching power he was killing them off. After another 5 minutes there were no more lizards. You have defeated 4 eye lizards x17. You have defeated 6 eye lizards x8. You leveled up. You leveled up. You leveled up. You leveled up. Okay, it is looking better. My stats increased by 4, and I have increased my HP by 480, even though it is still missing some. Status. Name. Izuku Midoriya. Job. None. Title. Zombie Slayer. Level. 24. Fatigue. 58. HP. 1823,000. MP. 124 390s. Strength. 53. Agility. 41. Sense. 40. Vitality. 40. Intelligence. 38. Remaining points. 0. Damage reduction. 5%. Now where is the big lizard? Sensing it to the northeast of him, he used sprint which got his mana down another 50 MP, and continued with 1 MP per second. Surprising the T-Rex he gave a punch to the side of it, but was backhanded to the side. Faster, I need to be faster. Fatigue. 64. Skill sprint LV.1, active. Fatigue. 72. When the T-Rex was about to crush him, he remembered that he didn't use status recovery from the daily quest. Having a small smirk he said except, with that a golden light was upon him. Using this opportunity of distraction, he activated Spurnt again, and punched with his back into it in the brain of the T-Rex. Doing it four more times with the effect of Contagus making the head of the T-Rex to explode. Sighing in relief, he checked what he got. You have defeated 8 I T-Rex. You leveled up. You leveled up. You leveled up. You have found a dagger from the 8i T-Rex. The dagger, finally I really needed one. So he checked the stats on it. Item. T-Rex dagger. Item class. C. Type. Dagger. Attack. Plus 20. Made out of the 8i T-Rex tooth. Obtainable by defeating 8i T-Rex. Unlikely drop rate. The dagger grants attack and defense. Effect T-Rex defense. Minus 25% damage reduced when blocking with a dagger. Whirling the dagger with his hand, he smirked. Then another sigh left his mouth I seem to be sighing a lot lately as it was true as he has to deal with the other six. Suddenly the wall exploded, with the mentioned six looking at him with shock, seeing him defeat the boss. Well well well, it seems the kid actually killed the monster. How sad, I wanted to kill the boss. The boss of the small group mentioned. One other smirk boss man, at least we have this one, Izuku could feel the small amounts of bloodlust that was emanating from the group. Alarm. An emergency quest has been issued. There are entities nearby that intend to murder the player. Slay them and ensure your safety. If this quest is not completed your heart will stop. Enemies required to be killed. 6. Enemies killed. 0. What is this? The system suddenly a frantic Izuku thought. He was broken out of his thoughts as the one with the fireball quirk used his quirk on him. Midoriya was sent flying backwards. When the others started to celebrate, Izuku realized something. In a whisper he said, the system uses me, and I use the system then he started to laugh hysterically. The gang realized he wasn't dead. Izuku said from a whisper to a shout, why did I forget that? This place focuses on the survival of the fittest more than anywhere else. I need to be one on top. This scared some of the other members of the gang. My thinking was wrong until now. The many times I was beaten down, close to death and a lot of times. I mistook the dungeons as a safe place. This world, it needs something more than All Might with his weakness. It needs to know true power, so this is the system. Kill if you don't want to be killed. Wouldn't it be awkward if I die? Izuku thought. His mentality changed a bit there, a new Izuku was born. The guy with the fireball quirk off was freaking out, he was sure his aim wasn't off, and he did put a lot of energy into it. You played around with a person's life, so are you ready to face the consequences? Izuku asked in a monotone voice. What is this bastard saying? One of the cockier ones asked. You are outnumbered kid. The next thing the man knew was Izuku was standing behind him with the sword slashing his neck. Of course, the other gang members went quiet, but soon they wanted revenge on the one who took the life of one of their own. What I mean is, you should be ready to become hunted. Enemies required to be killed. 5. Enemies killed. 1. Then the gang all went to attack him with fireball one sent his fireballs, another sent out knives. Other two went straight to attack him, whilst the leader activated his quirk shield to protect himself, and the two ranged attackers from the so-called hunter. I can't run away anymore. I am not a Deku. If only the strong will survive then flashbacks of his childhood and the discrimination he faced. Especially the image of his mother dying in his hands. He looked at them with his eyes glowing blue instead of his natural green, and some of his hair having more black with only green tips. 
Shadows covered his face with an aura that made the enemies sweat a bit. Don't let your guard down boys, Jayu give him one more blow the leader asked a fire quirk user. Whilst he threw it at Izuku, the gamer used sprint to dodge the attack, and the next thing the Jayu person knew was Izuku up in his face. Their quirk is annoying still with the blue eyes glowing, he used the newly acquired dagger and cut him into pieces. The leader had his eyes widen as Izuku just ignored his defense. Enemies required to be killed. 4. Enemies killed. 2. That bastard one of the heavy hitters yelled at Izuku, with the both of them rushed with a lot more bloodlust, but nothing Izuku couldn't handle. Izuku changed a dagger to his left hand and punched the one on the right with his gauntlet, and the left slashed from the right to the left of the torso. The one he slashed died quickly, but the one with the right was paralyzed, with his skin starting to rot, due to the effect contagious, to stop the man's torment Izuku slashed his head off. Enemies required to be killed. 2. Enemies killed. 4. The knife-throwing quirk user was the next on Izuku's hit list. Dodging multiple projections with only receiving a minor slash on his right arm, causing a minimum amount of blood to come out. This made Izuku promise to put more points in sense, agility and intelligence. Not wanting to prowling the battle, Izuku used the dagger and cut the man into 30 pieces, splashing some of the blood on the hunter too. Damn, I feel so natural with a dagger. Enemies required to be killed. 1. Enemies killed. 5. Alarm. New skill has been created. Skill Advanced Dagger Arts LV.1, Passive. Due to the user preference to use daggers, you can use daggers more proficiently. When a dagger is used, the attacks gain 33% additional damage. One more, and a new skill. Izuku internally mused. In a flash, all my members you bastard, you were hiding your skills. The final guy shouted, he wanted to say more, but Izuku rushed at him with his gauntlet hand and smashed his head on the ground. I'm always leveling up ceaselessly. Izuku replied before ending the man's tournament as he wanted to bribe Izuku and even try to threaten him. My clothes became a mess again, the size isn't matching anymore, so I guess I'll need two but new clothes. Enemies required to be killed. Zero. Enemies killed. Six. Quest reward. Emergency quest. Kill the enemies. Completion conditions have all been met. Will you receive the reward? Accept refuse. Except Izuku mattered as he put some blue crystals which turned out to be mana crystals in his inventory. Before even looking at the rewards he found something in the body of the fireball quirk user. A rune stone, interesting. Alarm. You have received rune. Fireballs. Rune. Fireballs. Hype. Rune. A skill can be obtained by breaking the rune. Um, I will see if I can get more runes as they seem pretty useful. Now he was looking at the rewards. But this means I need to get my intelligence up more. You received three rewards. Reward 1. Status recovery. Reward 2. Experience points plus 10. Reward 3. Skill bloodlust. Will you accept your rewards? Accept refuse. Accept, it seems that I am getting three skills today. Izuku laughed dryly. The status recovery made his cut healed up and got his fatigue back to zero. The ten experience points were split, two into strength, two into agility and the six into intelligence, due to the skills that he will learn. Then came the two interesting skills. Firstly, the bloodlust skill. Alert. New skill has been learnt. Skill, bloodlust LV.1, active. With the use of 40 MP you can intimidate an opponent using strong energy for one minute, which includes the stare of fear reducing their stats by 50%. Several targets can be selected. Then he crushed the rune stone. Alert. New skill has been learnt. Skill fireball LV.1, active. With the use of 50 MP you can use fireballs to attack. It can deal a maximum of 500 HP damage. Alert. Skills when you level up can do multiple things. A the MP cost will lower. B the damage done will increase. C a new part of the skill will be available. The increase in proficiency in a skill. When a skill is maxed there is a possibility for it to evolve. Be warned not all skills can evolve. If there are two or more max similar skills they can join and evolve into a stronger skill. Oh that is interesting now he was going to get some sleep as he needs it. Bait in trance. One man with a red bandana covering his eyes, was looking how a young boy who was clearly in his thoughts, was about to be ganged up. He was about to help, but then a portal appeared. Once again the man was about to jump in, but it closed up. It was only one hour later when it opened and saw the young boy have some blood, but also seemed stronger. He was curious so he stayed there for another 10 minutes, but nothing came out. So he deduced that he killed them, but he also smelled a lizard type smell, so it made him more curious. However he seemed to lose the boy, even though he was happy as one of his targets was a hero with a shield quirk. Nothing too powerful, but as his would be 12th target it would be something. A fake hero or a fake sidekick to be more precise. A couple of days later. 
Then Hero's agency a elderly man was wondering where his sidekick was. It was now three days of him not showing up to work, so it made him worried. He called the police and even went to his home, but he wasn't there. Damn, where could he be? A man in a samurai type armor with a gray beard asked. This was the number 9 hero, the equipped hero. Yoroi Musha. Could it be the hero killer? Izuku's Pav. It was an additional three weeks when I have found something out. When I was eating my food, a notification popped out. Alarm. The harmful substance has been detected. Buff. Cure poison's effect is healing you. Widening my eyes at the implementation of this fact. 3, 2, 1, cure poison has been completed. The reward of my first E rank 8, I think I accidentally overlooked it, I then remembered the courage of the weak rewards. Quest reward. Secret quest. Courage of the weak. Great spellcaster Candiera's blessing. He has gifted a special spell to you. Candiera's blessing will ensure that you will always be strong and healthy during your lifetime. It's also thanks to this quest that I didn't have a permanent brain injury, thanks to All Might. Quest reward. Temporary effect will to rehabilitate. Any dismembered body parts are restored. Permanent effect longevity. All diseases, poisons and status effects are healed, and sleeping will explosively increase regeneration ability. If I'm immune to all poisons, that means I took out the class A potion. Item. Rocket blood. Item class. A. Type. Potion. The pouch that contains rocket purified blood. Obtainable by defeating rocket. Unlikely drop rate. Drinking it will give you harder skin and pain nullification, but will weaken your agility. Effect Rocket Rock Skin. Minus 10% physical damage taken. Effect Rocket Pain Nullifier. Minus 15% pain felt. Ebuff Weakened Movement. Minus 25, Agility. If status effects are automatically healed, won't this item's debuff be removed as well? There is no reason to think. With that I drank the potion. The harmful substance has been detected in your body. 3, 2, 1, Cure Poison has been completed. Item. Rocket Blood's effect. Weakened movement is fading. Just as I thought. Name. Izuku Midoriya. Job. None. Title. Zombie Slayer. Level. 27. Fatigue. 0. HP. 3560. MP. 530. Strength. 78. Agility. 56. Sense. 53. Vitality. 53. Intelligence. 60. Remaining points. 0. Physical damage reduction. 10%, plus 5%. Physical pain nullification. 15%. This caused me to smile, even though the reduction is 10% and 15%, it was still something of note. Eventually, I will get more armor allowing me to gain less damage. Additionally, something interesting too happened today whilst I was completing the daily quests. Complete push-ups 200 100 Complete curl ups 200 100 Complete sit ups 200 100 Complete squats 200 100 Complete run 2010 km. I expected to get a better reward as this was a hidden quest and it didn't disappoint. Sadly, as this was a one time thing this is what I got. Rewards from a hidden quest. Reward 1. Status recovery. Reward 2. Stat points plus 3. Reward 3. Blessed random box, select. Reward 3. Cursed random box, select. Will you accept your rewards? Accept refuse. I added the 3 points already into my stats and left the status recovery. The blessed random box has something that I want, but the cursed random box has something I need. So I chose the blessed one of course, one reason being that I am happy with the way things are going, and in all honesty, I don't know what I need at this moment in time. Blessed random box. The box will be chosen in 3, 2, 1. You received the key for the Heaven's Castle key. Item. Heaven's Castle Key. Item Class. S. Type. Key. The key that allows you to enter dungeon. Heaven's Castle. Can be used in Endeavor's Hero Agency entrance. A couple of hours later. It was the dead of night and I was outside the Endeavor's Hero Agency. I had my hood up and a face mask for me to be more anonymous, so no one can track me down. Walking up to the entrance I put the key in. However there was one number two hero who was coming back from patrol that saw me enter. So I waved at him and jumped in causing the gate to close, definitely pissing the big man off as I swore I heard flame burining or something. Jumping in I only saw a corridor which I followed. It was beautiful if I had to say anything about it, massive arch waves being placed every 20 meters or so with gold and white decorating them. Walking another 10 minutes there was a staircase in the open air that lead to a massive gate, but in front of the gate was a tall humanoid looking figure. It had a massive pair of wings with a halo atop of his head. 
The face part of the body had a mask with a cross across it for the monster to breath and see through apparently. The monster had a dark red name, but also hold a weapon, which was a spear that gave off a powerful amount of energy, so I had to be careful of it. In all honesty, I didn't want to find out. Heaven's Gatekeeper St. Peter. I will become much stronger that is if I survived, but dying would be awkward, and I wouldn't reach my goals. I can't lose here, it would be a pain getting myself to hell, even though heaven is close. The best choice is to level as much as I can before UA, as I don't know how many opportunities I will have. I'm used to myself whilst getting ready. St. Peter flew at me with tremendous speed which I dodged just in time. I tried to slash with my dagger which made a small cut on the calf, this caused some blood to erupt from the cut. But the spear that was about to hit me, hit the ground, instead causing a massive crater which nearly made me hesitate to do more. Skill Sprint LV.1 has been activated. But this moment, I tried to hit the gatekeeper once more, but it was blocked by the spear. Deactivating the skill, I was thinking of a plan of action. Jumping back I activated another more recent skill, dodging a spear thrust once more. Skill Fireball LV.1 has been activated. I made three large fireballs above me and shot them at the enemy at St. Peter. I was trying to use this as a distraction, but the enemy had different plans. Evan's gatekeeper St. Peter is using skill reflection. All mana attacks fired will be shot back with double the speed and power back to their original target's location. Oh shit I yelled and activated the sprint skill again. I went to my inventory and got a mana potion as I only had 30 MP left. Mana potion. Item class. E. Type. Consumable. The potion that can restore mana. Restores 500 mana upon consumption. Mana. 530 530s. I don't want my stomach to be filled with potions so bring it on. I activated another skill so I can use the opportunity of being able to defeat St. Peter. Skill Bloodlust LV.1 has been activated. The enemy's resistance was too high, the effect was cancelled. Cursing under my breath, I used my speed skill for 5 seconds going around it, trying to cut it with my dagger, or even punch it with my gauntlet. Damn, I need to think of a way to defeat it. Suddenly, I was too late to dodge the downward swing of the spear. Unluckily for me, my left arm was cut off. I was glad I had some pain nullification as that shit hurts. I tried to move, but I couldn't as the swing also caused me to make a crater in the ground. I just realized that I could die, I started to grin for some reason. Fatigue. 72. HP. 893560. MP. 435530. HP. 853560. HP. 810 as your health is below 30% skill perseverance will activate. Damage taken will be reduced by 50%. I remembered I still have the status effect, but I can't waste it. So without moving I summoned 4 fireballs and shot 3 around and 1 dead center, so St. Peter will need to use his skill giving me more time. MP. 35 530s. Reward 1. Status recovery except it was just in the nick of time as the St. Peter threw the spear straight at me where I was. Realizing I got my left arm back using sprint I got behind him and threw my dagger at it. But St. Peter blocked it with his arm gourds. I released the dagger from the mortal world into my system and got it to my own hands back again. This is a good matchup. Looking at my skills. But my attacks aren't having effect. Evan's gatekeeper St. Peter is using the skill baptism. When an enemy is hit by the skill, you will perish, but after death you will become an angel under God's rule. Not a bad way to die, but I ain't dying here. With pure luck and speed I have outrun the devastating attack and got into the guard of the saint. The system tells me the gap between my enemies and I, but I must overcome it. When inside the guard of the guardian of heaven, I slashed his chest causing him to back up for a couple of steps. Then I realized something crucial. The saint is healing himself. Damn, I don't have any more status recovery. I must do something. I guess the system is making me stronger with it I did. I rushed forward again and got the spear in my hand, the said opponent was surprised which I took to my advantage. Stabbing him through the chest to where the heart should be sounded easy, but when against his armor, I had to put everything in it, so it could penetrate it. This and the activation of bloodlust skill that actually caused the saint to stop, allowed me to stab him, through the head into the brain, killing it finally instead of the chest. You have slain heaven's gatekeeper Saint Peter. You leveled up. You leveled up. You leveled up. You leveled up. Thanks to you, I realized what my level is. I still need to get stronger. So if I open the gate now I will die. But hear me, I will come back and defeat all of heaven if I have to. Item. Lance of Longinus. Item class. S. Height. Spear. Attack. Plus 800. Obtained by killing St. Peter the Heaven's Gatekeeper. 
This spear was stabbed in the side of Jesus to ensure his death. It has extra attack power towards creators of demons or fallen. Effect. An extra plus 200 attack when dealing with the enemies of God. Item. St. Peter's Ring. Item class. A. Type. Ring. Intelligence plus 20, Vitality plus 20. Item. Heaven Gate Key. Item class. A. Type. Key. The key that can open the Heaven Gate's door. Obtained by killing the gatekeeper. Sweet, plus 20 for both intelligence and vitality. I sure needed. Izuku chuckled. Status. Name. Izuku Midoriya. Job. None. Title. Zombie Slayer. Level. 31. Fatigue. 0. HP. 4360. MP. 670. Strength. 82. Agility. 60. Sense. 57. Vitality. 77. Intelligence. 84. Remaining points. 0. Physical damage reduction. 10%, plus 5%. Physical pain nullification. 15%. Skills. Passive. Unknown, max. Muscularity, LV.1. Advanced dagger arts, LV.1. Active. Sprint, LV.1. Bloodlust, LV.1. Fireball, LV.1. Armor. Rocket Gauntlet, C rank, right hand paralyzed contagious. St. Peter's Ring, A rank, left middle finger plus 20 and plus 20 vid. Weapon. P Rex Dagger, C rank, dagger plus 20 attack minus 25% damage reduced. Lance of Longinus, S rank, spear plus 800 attack extra plus 200 against God's enemies. The next four weeks was the same routine, exercise daily, try and level up my skills and study for UA. I had two D rank dungeons which leveled me up to level 36, and currently I am in a C rank gate. I think my luck is coming to me after the years of pain and misery with the mystery boxes. However I have a feeling that this power is foreshadowing something. Although defeating skeleton warriors isn't as much fun as you would think, my title helps me have an easier time. Level 39 is what I am currently sitting at. With a spear thrust to one and a cut to another boom, level 40. You leveled up. I received a new notification following the leveling one, but before I go into that I have gotten two more skills that I acquired recently. Skill Vital Strike LV.1, Active. Dagger Only Skill. Uses 70 MP to deal critical damage as you attack your foe's vital area. The second one was the one I bought for 580,000 gold. A rune stone to be per size. I decided that sometimes I do need to be stealthy if I want to be a hero, or to get a drop on a monster. Skill, Stealth LV.1, Active. It requires 200 MP to activate and 10 MP per second to use it for a longer period of time. You become invisible to the naked eye with sound, smell, and presence erased. I actually bought this skill so I could have a variety, it also did another purpose. I remembered the face of the shield man I killed. He was a sidekick to Yoroi Musha, even though that man is old I still respect him. With this in mind, I searched the web and done some snooping to find all of the mud behind the shield sidekick. Let me tell you, there was a lot, I was happy that I killed him. After getting acquainted with this skill, I had a maximum of 47 seconds to get in and out of the office. It was hard, I even had to drink 1 MP potion for 500 MP as I was low on it. At the end it was a success, with giving the file to the number 9 hero's desk. I remember a rumor in the internet saying something of a man who could take and give quirks which I found very interesting. It seems with the system I can have a similar ability, but with me I can get them through rune stones. Hopefully I can get a healing one so I can be be an all-rounder. But that is the thought for the future as now I have a different task in front of me. Also I have leveled up advanced dagger art LV.1 to LV.2, with it gaining an extra 7% of additional damage, giving me 40% when using daggers. Additionally my skill sprint has too leveled up. Sadly, I have not received any skills for the spear that I am in possession of as I did just get it and it is used as a tertiary weapon just after the gauntlet. Moving on to the message that I have received. The player has reached the required level. Wait. Required level. Like with the shop option to buy. The shop was open at level 25, it has a lot of sections as potions, weapons, armor, miscellaneous and rune stones. The job change quest has arrived. Will you accept the quest? Accept reduce. Job? None. I will do it after I finish this dungeon. With that I put the screen somewhere where it won't distract me and continued into the boss room. I had to defiate a lot more enemies as it seemed that they never finish with finally entering a massive boss room. A skeleton figure was in the center with a light orange name. It only took me two minutes to defiate it, but add after the job change I leveled up two levels, so I think that is a beneficial thing. Status. Name. Izuku Midoriya. Job. 
None. Title. Zombie Slayer. Level. 42. Fatigue. 13. HP. 6080. MP. 900. Strength. 108. Agility. 93. Sense. 82. Vitality. 108. Intelligence. 108. Remaining points. 0. Physical damage reduction. 10% plus 5%. Physical pain nullification. 15%. Skills. Passive. Unknown. Max. Muscularity. LV.1. Advanced Dagger Arts. LV.2. Active. Sprint. LV.2. Bloodlust. LV.1. Fireball. LV.1. Vital Strike. LV.1. Stealth. LV.1. I was ready for it, I was also glad that I took my time not to rush things. So the next day I went out around 3 pm, I had a feeling someone was following me, but there were no sings of bloodlust. I kinda forgot to do the daily quest today, so I am hoping I can get this done quickly. Going to a park where not a lot of people attend, I said, accept job change quest. Then a purple portal appeared and I jumped in. But before the portal closed, someone jumped in, I was flabbergasted at who it was. Maruko. Maruko some time earlier, Maruko's pov. After the kid threw a pipe at the villain, my interest in him began. I started to patrol the area where he was and this day I finally found him. He seems to already sense someone following him, it could be me, but I think it was the blonde hair girl that had a look that I couldn't place following him too. So when I saw him go to a park and mutter some words, a purple portal shot open. He jumped in, so I too had to. I saw the blonde girl doing the same with her explosions, but it seemed that she didn't make it. The next thing I heard was a shout of my hero name by a surprised green-haired kid that was nearly a foot taller than me. And Pav. Izuku looked down at Maruko, eh, Maruko what are you doing here? You interested me with the pipe you threw, and now you are jumping through a portal, so what gives? The rabbit woman berated Izuku. Even though she didn't add also you smell actually nice compared to others. So basically you stalked me and jumped in a random portal that could go anywhere. Izuku asked in all seriousness. A small embarrassed blush appeared on her face, then Maruko's fist embedded in Izuku's shoulder, shut up. After a couple of seconds, the gamer sighed fine, before you ask. I can create portals where I go and improve my skills. Monsters appear and I need to kill them and then the boss to get out of a dungeon. Her widened eyes and mouth turinging into a devilish smile, heck yeah, I can finally get loose. Oh and what's your name? Now you ask jeez, I'm Izuku Midoriya by the way, but just call me Izuku, he introduced himself with a mock bow. You have entered a dungeon. Before you ask any more questions, let me explain further. In dungeons anything can happen, different monsters, traps, and whatever. The monsters have to be killed and occasionally they drop loot like in a video game. And so, even before Rumi could react, Izuku summoned his spear and threw it through a knight. Keep your senses open, we need to kill them. You have slain a knight. Rumi came up to Izuku and poked in the spear as it was summoned back to Izuku, what is this? Before Maruko asked any questions. Ah, this. This is the Lance of Longinus, I got it by defeating Saint Peter. It was a different dungeon I entered a while ago, Izuku said straight face. You defeated a fucking angel. She said in disbelief. I did he said with a sigh, anyways, let's get this over and done with. Receiving a nod from the rabbit girl. It is a dull type monster, it will be annoying if more of these guys show up in the future. Oh and by the way he turned to her, we can't exit until we clear this, as I don't have a hearthstone. Receiving a nod with a little hesitation. Izuku received this message too. In this area, your potion and show ability is restricted. On level up, you do not receive status healing. Should Izuku muttered, receiving a confused look he answered the unasked question. I can't use any healing abilities of mine for some reason in this dungeon. Eh, so we can die here. Tuckling, we will not die here, I don't want to explain why the bunny hero is dead. Rumi tried to hit Izuku's head but missed, I am a rabbit not a bunny you idiot. As it seems to be fate, Izuku tackled the bunny away, there was a magician that shot a fireball at her. Oi bunny, get your head in the game. I know this is weird, but please look out. Rumi blushed slightly, as she was the one who people depended on and not being one to depend on someone. She didn't know this feeling, but she won't complain, as she liked the warmth. Then they both got up to start their fight. Hunching and kicking, with an occasional spear swing was all that was heard for the next 30 minutes. Rumi for her part was enjoying every minute of it. She usually had short and quick fights with an occasional one that gets her blood pumping as much, she needs to ask Izuku to take her to other gates, as she wants to feel the adrenaline pumping in her veins more often. Izuku realized that the soilders were using his skills, from fireball to ones with spears, others were knights. Heck, some of them were assassins with the stealth part. 
The amount of times he saved the bunny from the assassins was not funny as she couldn't smell or hear them. He also realized another fact, if he had dropped points from strength he couldn't break the knight's armor as a dagger was mostly useless with them. If his sense was low then he wouldn't detect the assassins. Due to the still low mana then using skills would be useless, as he couldn't replenish it to fight against the magicians. Then the spearman who he thought was about agility so he could miss the spear thrusts and throws. You have slain a knight x16. You have slain a magician x3. You have slain an assassin x8. You have slain a spearman x5. You leveled up. He also received a couple of extra loot. He tried to give them to Rumi, but some didn't work with her, the armor for example was visible on her, and it wasn't in her style, as apparently it would look ridiculous on her. Item. Leather pouch. Type. Container. The pouch to carry money. Item. High knight's chest plate. Item class. B. Type. Armor. Plus 7% physical damage reduction. Slows movement if your strength is below 80. Item. Lukewarm water. Type. Consumable. 1 L of water at room's temperature. Izuku shared the water with Maruko, and both of them started to cool off. The bunny girl was glad to get a break out of the constant fighting and being saved by the admittedly handsome teen next to her from the assassins. Fatigue. 54. HP. 54 90 60 200. MP. 900 915. I can see the door to the boss room, Izuku stated seeing the 5 meters tall gates. How are you doing? Smirking she replied tired, but this is fun. Nodding, if it will be too hard for you, let me handle it. What he got from her was a hesitant nod. She couldn't argue, from what he has shown so far he is pretty strong with a lot of stamina to boot. Especially with the assassins, she promised herself to get stronger too. Those opponents were around B rank villains and even though she may be considered an S rank hero, it was because of her leg power. After another 10 minutes with Izuku's fatigue going down to 33, but suddenly another assassin was about to sneak up onto the top 10 hero which Izuku killed. Then he blocked an arrow, with his dagger fuck archers. Another 5 grueling minutes to be able to get in the door. You have slain an archer x7. You have slain a soilder x2. You leveled up. Finally being able to open the door, both could see it was an open room with a lot of space. There was one thing that made a shiver go down the both of their backs. A dark red name for Izuku especially. Blood Red Commander Igris. Item. High Knight's Gauntlet. Item Class. D. Type. Armor. Plus 5% Physical Damage Reduction. Slows movement if your strength is below 80. Item. High Magician's Ring. Item Class. D. Type. Ring. Increases Mana Regeneration by 10 Mana per minute. He placed the other gauntlet on his left hand and the ring on his right middle finger. For some reason the rings and the gauntlet don't interfere with each other. He was ready to defeat the boss and get a job change. Blood Red Commander Igris. Both hunters could hear themselves gulp. For Maruko her animal instincts are telling her to run, but for Izuku, it was the memories of him nearly giving up on strong opponents. Eh, bunny. I don't know if you can feel the aura, but he is strong. Ignoring the nickname of his she said, I agree. The knight that protects the empty throne. Was what Izuku thought as the humans looked into the shining whites of the commander's face. The metal monstrosity slowly walked down the stairs, as both hero and team prepared to fight it. Running towards the gamer, the knight used his sword to nearly decapitate Izuku and Maruko. The greenette took out his dagger and tried to stab him, but to no avail, as its armor was better than the dagger's skills. The hero tried to use its distracted state, but the knight turned around and caught her by the leg and threw her to the wall, causing a massive indent in it. Maruko the taller of the two shouted. Chuckling slowly, she whispered just enough to make Izuku hear, this is nothing, my blood is pumping, I am feeling the touch of death. Touching her forehead, it was a long time since I seen my own blood. With a minical grin she said confidently, after we defeat this red guy, I am taking you out to dinner for the entertainment. This caused a small blush to appear on Izuku's face, then a couple of seconds of Igris looking at her with a semi-deadpan expression. Rumi realized what she said and blushed denying it in her head. Using this opportunity Izuku said whilst attacking and dodging the sword, sure, we will talk about this after this gate. There was a downward swing from Igris that Izuku barely blocked with his dagger and his gauntlet supporting him. Jumping back, Izuku and Maruko regrouped, and both would try to attack him simultaneously. Some damage was obviously done but nothing to major. Izuku had a thought I think we are using the same armor, so he has to have strength over 80 to be able to do that. I guess, it's with my fists and your legs he Maruko or should I say Ermi. I preferred the bunny nickname, but I don't mind if we are not on duty. Hi, hi. But what surprised the both next was Igris stabbing his sword to the ground and releasing his cape with some of his extra daggers, which were located on his back. 
Chivalry, not many actually have that so I must say I respect you. But you are still not taking us seriously. Izuku said though internally he was glad he wasn't taking them both seriously. But that the commander rushed at both of them with them both jumping out of the way of his trajectory. Maruko went to the back of him whilst Izuku the front of him, both tried using punches and kicks, but not punch work due to Igris dodging or blocking. Finally, he grabbed Izuku's leg and threw him onto the empty throne. Causing a moan of pain from Izuku to come out, Rumi was distracted for a split second, causing a similar fate to occur to her. Izuku caught her in a princess carry and whispered to her, I have a plan, you try and regain some energy. This was a moment where a notification came. Alarm. As your health has dropped below 30% skill. Perseverance will be active. Damage taken will be reduced by 50%. My defense increased due to my passive skill, I still have a chance. Plopping the bunny girl on the throne, Izuku summoned his spear, and without a moment of hesitation threw it. It missed the main body, but not the left forearm, causing it to be ripped out of the body. This is where white liquid came out which seemed as blood. The matter lies in the spear, he summoned his dagger and using a newer skill. Igris tried getting his weapon by skill dominator's touch, but was too late. Skill vital strike LV.1, active. Dagger only skill. Uses 70 MP to deal critical damage as you attack your foe's vital area. Using the skill on Igris, he finally jumped onto Igris and stabbed under his helm. Then with a final punch, he got the blood red commander Igris to the other side. Alarm. You have slain blood red commander Igris. You leveled up. You leveled up. Walking up to Maruko first and both of them walking to the Igris full in body. Did we win? Izuku asked in between his panting. I think the red guy underestimated us further, allowing you to surprise him with your spear. I guess I did. I guess my luck helped me here, if I made a mistake, I would have died. Oh shut it Izuku, you promised me dinner together so you can't die easily. But inside this definitely was a higher rank that S ranks would have trouble with, possibly Endeavor, and All Might could have the power, Ryukyu if she turned to her dragon mode, but his sword would have decapitated something. I need to get stronger. Oh look it dropped a couple of items. Red Knight's Helmet Dominators Touch X2. Leather Pouch Heartstone X2 have been obtained. Wait 2 Dominators Touches, that is awesome. Izuku said in excitement. What are those 4 stones? Maruko asked in curiosity. Those two red stones are something called rune stones, you can learn new skills, or some people may call them quirks. Those two have the same ability called dominator's touch, this allows us to learn a form of telekinesis. Wait us. Maruko was generally surprised. She expected him to keep them both for himself. Yeah, you helped me clear this dungeon. So there you are. He handed a rune stone to her and the return crystal, by the way, please don't tell anyone about the rune stones, as the amount of greedy people would want those will be astronomical, and use it during dire needs whilst patrolling. Izuku received an understanding nod from her, the other one can be only used in this dungeon to leave, wait, why did they give it to us? Both of them realized one thing, it is not over yet. Seeing as they both have some time, Izuku checked the other two items. Item. Red Knight's Helmet. Item Class. S. Type. Armor. Plus 15% physical damage reduction. Plus 20 strength, plus 20 vitality. Item. Leather Putch. Has been opened. You have received. 1,500,000, gold. Total gold. 3,082,982 g. I think my gold doubled in an instant. Izuku thought but furthermore an S rank item. This is my second S rank item. Putting it on, wow, these stats are on another level, it is incredible. Burn stone. Dominator's touch. Type. Rune stone. The skill can be obtained by breaking the rune. Item. Hearthstone. Type. Consumable. The quest exclusive item. If you break the hearthstone, you will instantly leave the dungeon. If the job quest ends, the dungeon is automatically destroyed. Cannot be stored. Name. Izuku Midoriya. Job. None. Title. Zombie Slayer. Level. 46. Fatigue. 72. HP. 1705-6960. MP. 780-960s. Strength. 132. Agility. 97. Sense. 86. Vitality. 132. Intelligence. 112. Remaining points. 0. Physical damage reduction. 11%, plus 32%. Physical pain nullification. 16%. At Ready Bunny, this dungeon isn't finished yet. Izuku warned her. Don't worry, I have got it. Also can you keep the rune stone with you until we get out the dungeon as I don't have any pockets? Rumi asked sheepishly. With a nod Izuku hid it in his inventory. There was a sound of swoosh that showed it was a greenish-red portal. 
Then more portals began to appear. The job change quest will begin. Shit, then this is my job change quest. Then he cursed himself as Rumi looked at him with her curious eyes, I will explain everything during our dinner. She blushed a little with the reminder but nodded. The longer you last, the more points you can collect that will place you into a higher tier job. Zero o'clock. Points the longer I last. Good luck. Zero o'clock and one second. Zero o'clock and two seconds. Then night started to pour out of the gates, every seconds means more points. Izuku said then so the chance of obtaining a hidden class goes up the longer the timer goes on. Befitting for a job change quest Izuku muttered. Zero o'clock and 14 seconds. My remaining mana is 780. Rumi hold on to me. With that the two started to go invisible from Izuku's skill stealth, he then whispered to Rumi, we need to hide and make a plan, so I am using a skill of invisibility. With a nod they both got invisible. Izuku got Rumi on his back and carried her thighs which to his opinion were really thick and squishy. I can do it for a couple of minutes. He couldn't see Maruko's dark red face, her thighs and arms were around Izuku, and was lucky that she was invisible. Magician is using skill. Detection. The massive black eye appeared above the magicians, when it opened a purple iris looked straight at them, causing the confused soilders to go up to them with their weapons. Should it detected us. Still having Rumi on his back, he summoned his spear and started to cut them down with an occasional punch. Skill. Bloodlust was activated. The target stats will decrease by 50% for one minute. Maruko was just shocked in all honesty, the repertoire of the young man's before her was impressive. Rumi, use your hearthstone. But before any of them could both of their hearthstones were knocked out of their hands. Shit then a beatdown was starting to happen with Izuku protecting Rumi with the best of his abilities. He did realize that those knights didn't give him any levels and were around C rank at best with an occasional B rank, but they were annoying in large amounts. HP. 986,960. Rumi wasn't scared per se, but seeing how Izuku was taking the brunt of the asshole protecting her. Some memories were trying to come to the surface. 0.05 and 9 seconds. Shit with it he was punched in the side, causing the two living entities to slide backwards and started to be surrounded by knights. Izuku stood back up, but this time with Rumi behind him. I am sorry Rumi, but we need to try and defeat them together. We got it Izuku, it can't end like this. Rumi said with determination. Jumping up with his spear, I was at the bottom for so long, I longed for the highest place. I know the sadness of being weak more than anyone. Memories of children beating him up, parents giving him a pitying look. Izuku then remembered his mother, an overprotective mother sure, but she loved him the most. He was getting visions of his mother and father telling him to get some rest. Then something came out of the shadow, why do you always moor away from the safe road and dance with death on every occasion? He knew this voice, it was him before being awakened. Isn't it a great fortune that a quirkless person like you was able to grow this much? Isn't it great Izuku Midoriya? Rumi for her part wasn't doing much better, yes she wasn't getting as much as Izuku but still helped. She too had some visions of people in her childhood ridiculing her for her quirk being a mutant type. When time passed on, she could see people calling her out for her figure or how she looks, ignoring how well she can do her work. A younger self came up to her, wow I look beautiful, don't I? This caused her to stiffen and look back to see a young girl walking to her, you accidentally followed a young man who caught your interest into a death zone. He is still protecting you whilst you are still on your sorry ass. This wasn't happening was it, that was all going in her mind. I can't believe that we're the same person. You are taller, gained a lot of muscle, and look sharper. You look quite strong as well. But the only thing that changed was your appearance, you're still a weakling. What is the difference between you and me? You got yourself in a situation where you're in front of death once more. The two voices said to thy future selves. Izuku glimped and saw that Rumi was about to be killed, he moved. The movement was painful, but he was there and pushed Rumi away and blocked the incoming strike with his dagger. Until I am still alive I will protect you Rumi, so do not give up. I bet you are hearing the voices too, so don't listen to them. You are a strong woman, mentally and physically, so let's show them who is boss. Rumi was knocked out of her funk when Izuku pushed her out of the way. After she heard what he spoken to her, it caused a soft small but true smile to appear on her face. I met him properly just today, and he has done more than anyone in my life did. Thank you Izuku Midoriya. Izuku was having a hard time, the voice came around oh look, once again you don't know how to control yourself, your courage becomes recklessness. Hissing out shut up. After another minute, Izuku and Rumi were standing back to back. Tired. Yeah, I am. You have a long way to go, from now on you have to kill more people, and sacrifice or leave behind a lot of people, including friends and family. You will be the one to bring about your own demise. The voice spoke once again. Both Hero and Hunter were tired, they barely could move. Quest Directions. 
Daily quest getting ready to become powerful. Goal. Incomplete, push-up 0100. Incomplete, curl-up 0100. Incomplete, sit-up 0100. Incomplete, squat 0100. Incomplete, run 010 km. Warning. Failing to complete this daily quest will bring a punishment associated with this quest. Reading the message, he held his hand to get Rumi's hand in it. Blushing but also aware how close to death they were, so she didn't mind it. 5 seconds left. 4 seconds left. 3 seconds left. 2 seconds left. They say luck is also a skill. It looks like leaving you to die here is too much of a waste of it. Holding Maruko's hand tighter, the last thing the younger Izuku heard was see you. 1 seconds left. 0 seconds left. The slash came closer and closer from multiple sides. Then another notification came in. Alarm. You failed to complete the daily quest. You are being moved to the penalty zone. The axe that was about to come through the duo hit nothing but air confusing the knights. 009 and 39 seconds. Penalty zone. Both are seen on the floor panting, that was something Rumi muttered, holding her thigh. Yeah it was, it seems that we are in the penalty zone due to me forgetting to do my daily exercise. You have to do that but I must say good timing, otherwise we would be dead. No kidding. Fatigue. 92. HP. 84 6960. MP. 23960. Buying the best fatigue potions he could for 10,000 gold, he gave one to Maruko and one to himself. Drink this, it should help you. She drank it and all she could say was damn, I could fight again. What did it do? It helps with your fatigue and also should slowly give your health back to its original point. Your fatigue is being restored. 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 I should properly heal my HP and MP by leveling up here. And I might die in one hit. Izuku also bought a medic first aid kit and started to bandage Rumi's thigh with some minor protest of her. It will be better bunny, but anyways we need to deal with the insects here. But internally I have never felt better, I think I get what Rumi means, battle rush. Then the sand monsters came up with Izuku killing them by jumping on them or slashing at them with his spear. Alarm. Penalty quest. Survive. Goal. Survive until the time runs out. Time required. 4 hours. Remaining time. 3, h 58 min 28 sec. If the pain doesn't kill me, it will only make me stronger. Izuku thought, whilst Rumi looked at him with awe whilst she was still resting. With Kitsumi. The six months changed Kitsumi a lot. She knew that Izuku was in a coma for six months, but the doctors didn't call her mum after he woke up, only that he had been discharged. He wasn't in school, and anyway school would be finished soon, the final exams were done before Izuku was in a coma, so he was lucky with that. She saw him throw a pipe at a villain and was shocked with his appearance, like shouldn't the scrawny kid be more scrawny after a coma, but no Izuku was developing to be more of a Greek god which she begrudgingly accepted when she saw him earlier today. He entered some kind gate and having Maruko the rabbit hero follow him too. She wanted to follow but was too slow. She discovered that the rumor of Izuku awakening a quirk was true, of course they were not told the name, but on the school registry, Izuku awakened a quirk when he woke up, and now she saw it in action. She didn't know how to feel with that, be pissed as he will go and try be a hero or not a stay-at-home husband, she doesn't know. After an hour of waiting, she went to see his apartment which he still lived in. She got the extra key out and waited on the couch for a couple more hours. Then when it came for, she then had a thought. Maybe he gotten a girl for ya he can't he is mine. With that thought she went to sleep on the couch. Penalty zone some time later. Penalty quest. Survive. Goal. Survive until the time runs out. Time required. 4 hours. Remaining time. 0 h 8 min 23 sec. Skill. Vital strike LV.1. Vital strike skill has leveled up. You 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 have reached level 50. You received a reward. Accept reject. Our reward. Let accept it. Level 50 reward. Reward 1. Whenever you level up from level 50 and up you gain 100 more HP per level plus 200 HP, per level. Reward 2. Whenever you level up from level 50 and up you gain 10 more MP per level. Plus 20 MP, per level. Reward 3. You received an additional 5000 HP. Reward 4. You received an additional 500 MP. Well done. Rider's note, I am trying to make his stats familiar to Jin Wu, but my own style if you get me. Anyways, I always have a method of calculating HP and MP gain, so I am increasing the level up part. Name. Izuku Midoriya. Level. 51. Fatigue. 0. HP. 
12,440. MP. 1555. Penalty Quest. Survive. Goal. Survive until the time runs out. Time required. 4 hours. Remaining time. 0 h 3 min 41 sec. We have just over 3 minutes before we return. Izuku stated to Rumi. You need a stronger weapon she gave a hesitant nod. As I will explain my quirk later on, I will tell you part of it now. It is a gaming quirk so to speak, now I am using the gold I have collected from sealing junk items or unneed drops. Store. What weapon do you want to use? This caused Rumi to think, a dagger is probably my style. Smirking, I think I have the perfect one. Night Killer 2,800,000 G, bye. Found it. You have purchased Night Killer. This will help you especially with the knights here. It is called a Night Killer and is the best weapon I can get for you at this moment of time. He handed it to Maruko who was shocked. Are you sure? With a light smile, he nodded, thank you. What Maruko done next caused them to lightly blush, a small but affectionate hug. Item. Night Killer. Item Class. D. Type. Dagger. Plus 75 attack. Effect Night Slayer. If used against an opponent with heavy armor, your attacks deal 25% additional damage. Izuku bought some more bandages, let me wrap it around your hand so it won't drop like we did with our hearthstones. This caused them both to chuckle. You have purchased bandage. After Izuku helped Rumi bandage the dagger. He pulled out two runestone let's break them, we may increase our chances. Wait, so you break them and you get the skill. With Anoda and Izuku breaking it. He used a two-pole leg of the massive insect towards him. Breaking her own stone, she felt some sort of energy in her, causing her eyes to widen. She did the same as Izuku and got stars in her eyes. Once again she hugged Izuku, who was a little surprised, and caused her to be span around whilst both of them were laughing. Skill. Dominator's touch has been learned. Skill. Dominator's touch LV.1, active. No mana required. You can control objects without touching them. It is like a quirk, a skill that doesn't require me to use mana, so this is useful. Izuku stated whilst letting go of Rumi. This is the same thing as the Igris guy used. Penalty quest. Survive. Bowl. Survive until the time runs out. Time required. 4 hours. Remaining time. 0 h 0 min 4 sec. Remaining time. 0 h 0 min 3 sec. Hold my hand, we are going back. Our last chance with Rumi holding his hand more naturally. Remaining time. 0 h 0 min 2 sec. Remaining time. 0 h 0 min 1 sec. Remaining time. 0 h 0 min 0 sec. Penalty quest is concluding. So their numbers grew immensely within a few hours. Izuku asked jokingly. Let's kick their metal asses Rumi continued. With Izuku using the spear and Rumi her dagger it went so more easier, jumping on some head Izuku shouted, we need to kill the mages, they are the ones who are controlling those puppets, they are using summoning magic. Sure Izuku. With a nearly fatal slash that could happen if Izuku didn't regain his composure. So this is how you want to play it good bun bun. I will kick your ass when we get out of here. Sure but after dinner please. With them both having game faces, they traveled towards the magicians, with Izuku and Rumi went opposite ways and slashed the magicians. You have slain a magician. Good, two done, four more. Both saw that a chunk of the army was gone, turned into the armor. With that Izuku threw his spear at another one which hit its target. You have slain a magician. Alert. New skill has been created. Skill. Spear throw active. Deal damage by throwing your spear. As the skill's level increases, damage and accuracy will increase 70 mana. Alert. New skill has been created. Skill. Spear mastery art passive. Due to the user preference to use spears, you can use spears more proficiently. When a spear is used, the attacks gain 30% additional damage. New skills are always welcome, but finally some spear skills. Izuku mused to himself. Skill. Stealth LV.1, active. 200 mana. Magician is using skill. Detection. Magician is using skill. Detection. Magician is using skill. Detection. You can see the eye, kill them bun bun with that Rumi killed another one with her dominator's touch. Two more left. He then shot a fireball towards a group of knights allowing her access to a magician. Rumi saw the strategy that Izuku will use, but when he jumped down from his hiding position with a spear in one hand and a dagger in his left. She now saw the muscles on Izuku, the way his muscles moved. Izuku was wearing a light gray shirt with a hood and black tracksuit bottoms, and she must add he made the perfect style in it. The muscles from tightening his grip was showing, and it was so defined but not ugly as All Might or End of Her style. Then she looked at his usually green eyes that are burning blue right now with some of his green colors tips were waving around, he looked majestic. 
Even her animal instinct told her to bet him, but she knew that they were not in that stage of the relationship, yet. Yet again her brain betrays her. Izuku was using the skill. Dominators touched to deal some damage to the knights when they were going to the magicians. Suddenly, Maruko heard a cry of pain. Izuku was stabbed in his thigh just like her. How long are you going to hide behind your puppets? He killed the knight, but suddenly the remaining two magicians started to chant and created a massive golem made of armor of the fallen knights, exactly where Izuku was standing above. Izuku jumped down and started to run trying to distract the golem, whilst Maruko will kill the two remaining magicians. Rumi had it easier as the number of soilders decreased for the destructiveness of the golem. With her using Dominator's touch on one and a Luna fall kick on another the golem fell. 439 and 42 seconds. All the monsters in the room have been slain, the quest will end now. Damn, what a kick there bun bun. Izuku whistled in appreciation. Panting a bit, done. They walked to each other and fist bumped. Now what will be your job I wonder. Possibly an assassin or even a magician. Izuku wondered too. You will be able to choose a class based on the amount of points you have collected. Apparently I can choose a job. Izuku said out loud. The job will be granted after the player's actions have been analyzed. Though granted. I though I could choose. A shocked Izuku said. I did put a lot of stats in strength so warrior. But also a lot in my vitality so possibly a tank. A magician due to my mana points. Either way I'll become strong. Wherever the player goes, the reaper follows. The player's path is littered with corpses and the smell of blood. As the player possesses strength, he does not leave anything to his teammates and overcomes everything with his own strength. Izuku's eyes widened at that, didn't Rumi count too. Their desire for strength burns strong enough to call those who wander the valley of death and the army of the dead who follows your commands, shall create a path where your thread will be the law and you would never need another's help again. Army of the dead? Izuku said out loud, I did prefer Rumi not being here for her safety, but she did help a lot though. Then a realization came to both, wait this is my job. Your job is necromancer. The necromancer? Asked Rumi and she received a wide eye nod from her partner. Magic subclass necromancer. A grim magician and the undead army that follows. I have never heard of someone who has a necromancer quirk, but usually they have a sentience quirk or a summon quirk for one or two warriors. Izuku said out loud. Why not choose it? It will be different from other heroes' quirks, and it will be helpful for you as I won't lie even an S-rank hero like Mycelef, this dungeon would be impossible if I didn't have you or Atlas and other 4S-class heroes. So imagine having a lot of strong dead soilders that can help you. With a small smile, I met you a couple of hours ago, and you seem to already have a place in my heart, geez. Thank though I will choose this job then. Let's be a necromancer, I accept. It seems that this dungeon showed me a peek into the skill too Izuku didn't see steam coming from Rumi's head at the casual remark on her. Your job has been chosen. Based on the amount of points you obtained, you will be given a chance to promote to a superior class. You have exceeded the expected playtime. Points will be added. You did not use a hearthstone. Points will be added. Shadows started to form around Izuku, causing Rumi to widen her eyes. Final health is above 75%. Points will be added. All enemies have been slain. Points will be added. Your accidental partner did not die. Points will be added. The total points have exceeded the limit. You will be promoted from Necromancer to Shadow Monarch. You have learned a job exclusive skill. You have obtained bonus stats. You have obtained the title The One Who Overcame Adversary. The title give to those who overcame adversary heroically. Your stats increase proportionally to your missing health. 1% stat increase every 1% HP missing. Wow, I have been promoted to a shadow monarch. Izuku said to the wide eye Rumi, I can hear some sort of scream. Shadow extraction can be used on this target. Shadow extraction can be used on this target. Shadow extraction can be used on this target. So this is the necromancy ability, and necromancer is a commander type job. Please select your command phrase for shadow extraction. The command phrase arise the last word sent shivers down the rabbit harrow's back as she saw from the dead corpse's shadows come out. Black shadows with a blue light coming from its eyes, with fog coming from them. Ha this is pretty cool. Rumi still had her eyes widened. Skill. Shadow extraction LV.1. Dob specific skill. No mana required. The shadow soldier is created from a body without life by taking out its mana. The chance of failure increases the higher the target stats are, and the more time passed since the target's death. Shadows able to be extracted. 50 50ths. Skill. Save shadow LV.1. Dob specific skill. No mana required. You absorb created shadow soldiers and save them. Saved soldiers can be summoned and reasburbed whenever and wherever the animator desires. Saved shadows. 040. 
Does it mean, I can turn all the dead guys into summonable beings? Then Izuku looked at Igris. Shadow extraction can be used on this target. 44 infantry rank normal and 6 magicians rank elite. I can only save 40 of you. Izuku said somberly. If you want to use shadow extraction again, you must send one or more shadow soldiers to the world of nothingness through extraction cancel. I am sorry, even though I have called up one you guys Izuku punched with the side of his fist onto one of the infantry units chest cancel extraction on 11 infantry units. You cannot recall shadow soldiers that have been sent to nothingness. But the sad face but determined one too, he walked up to Igris, blood red commander Igris, if I have this guy as my soldier rise. Some shadows started to leak out, a massive explosion of shadows happened nearly knocking Izuku on his butt. You failed to extract the shadow. What? You still have two chances remaining. This guy has been dead for over four hours, and even so has nearly killed me, so his skills are high enough. Taking a sigh and reaching a hand out, Igris, I know you can hear me. Stop protecting the seat of someone who has already left and try protecting me, who is in front of you. Arise. The shadow started to come out, with a hand coming out slowly which Izuku grabbed pulling Igris out. Blood red Igris nope, that's too edgy I will call you Igris. You have upgraded the shadow. Shadow level will be 7. Shadows higher than rank knight can be named. You are now named Igris the shadow who is taller than Izuku, with blue shadows coming from his eyes, and some red tint coming out of his flowing red hair. Igris LV.7. Rank. Knight. Then the now named Igris bowed down with the rest of the infantry and the mages. Izuku and Rumi started to wonder what is going on. Izuku asked, can you speak Igris? With a shake of his head, the shadow monarch understood, hopefully when you will level up you can talk. Then Igris pointed to the throne. Blinking Izuku asked, do you want me to go to the throne? With a nod, Izuku went to the throne and looking at Igris where he gave a nod, Izuku sat. The way Izuku sat screamed monarchy, the top of the top. Even Rumi was having a hard time of not bowing down. But the sight of Izuku sitting on the throne and his army of 40 was a sight to see could make anyone bow down. Izuku then said, please take care of me. You have completed a secret quest. Throne of the Monarch. The seat of the previous master of Igris was here. You are the commander of your forces and your forces are the ones protecting you. You have received quest rewards. Accept refuse. Accept, why not he said whilst crossing one leg over the other and having a light smirk on his face. You have received the rewards for the secret quest. Reward 1. All of your current army leveled up by one level. Reward 2. You received 5 additional points. Reward 3. Your MP increased by 100. Wow that is pretty good, collect all rewards Izuku used to himself. Standing up, he commanded all shadows to go into his shadow and walked up to Rumi. I think we did our job in this gate. Yeah, now you have your job. Using her pointer finger onto Izuku's chest, now how do get out of here mister? Tuckling, we should exit in a couple of seconds my lady. Now they both were laughing. As Izuku said the gate disappeared a couple of seconds later, anyways, here is my number. He wrote it down on a piece of paper, then handing it to her, text me when our dinner will be, and if you want to go to another gate. She checked her phone, her eyes widened, it is past 5 am, now I have to patrol in 2 hours. I will text you though. Have fun patrolling. Rumi surprised herself and Izuku when she hugged him and then kicked off with her red face. Women are weird. Though he wondered where he could hear face lapping from. Status. Name. Izuku Midoriya. Job. Shadow Monarch. Idle. Zombie Slayer, plus one. Level. 51. Fatigue. Zero. HP. 12,440. MP. 1655. Strength. 137. Agility. 102. Sense. 91. Vitality. 137. Intelligence. 117. Remaining points. 15. Physical damage reduction. 11%, plus 32%. Physical pain nullification. 16%. Skills. Passive. Unknown, max. Muscularity, LV.1. Advanced dagger arts, LV.2. Advanced spear arts, LV.1. Active. Sprint, LV.2. Bloodlust, LV.1. Fireball, LV.1. Idle Strike, LV.2. Stealth, LV.1. Dominator's Touch, LV.1. Spear Throw, LV.1. Job Specific. Shadow Extraction, LV.1 and 4050s. Save Shadow, LV.1 and 4040s. Shadow Army. 33, Knights LV.2, Normal. 6, Magicians LV.2, Elite. Igris LV.8, Knight. 
I got a couple of messages when I arrived home from three different people, one from an uncount which was later turned into Bun Bun, another from my childhood friend Kakan, and lastly from dad. But firstly, I had to deal with the one person who is at my house currently. Kitsumi Bakugo Aka Kakan. When I walked into my house, my sense told me someone was there, so when someone who was Kitsumi was there I was generally surprised. I was too tired to care so I messaged her I came in and sleeping currently. So I woke up 5 hours later to someone poking me, apparently my shadow army decided it was safe and didn't interfere, so I was kinda glad. The one poking me was Kitsumi Bakugo. So why are you poking me? But a little surprise she said, you were not waking up. Where were you last night? I was with a friend out most of the night. Why do you want to know? DCH, like I need to know. I sighed at that and decided to get changed. I was almost sleeping in my underwear so apparently Kitsumi saw and with a red face shouted, when the fuck did you get so good looking? Then she shut her mouth and corrected a hem, when did you get the muscles? Working my eyebrow, I looked down at her due to once again a massive height difference. Once again why are you asking? Didn't you tell me to jump off a roof? Built was written all over her face, with some tears trying to get out, I am sorry, I just didn't want you to get hurt being a hero, so I tried to discourage it from you. I was stupid, I am sorry. I know I don't deserve your forgiving she was shut by myself hugging her. You talked too much, but I did figure it out. This was a surprise to her, ignoring how her face was on his chest, and she could feel and see the dense muscles in front of her. She croaked out how. Tuckling I replied, in your sleep, you were muttering of how you are sorry and wanting me to be your husband. What? I did not say that. She protested, that was a fruitless effort though seeing her atomic red face. I may not forgive you right now, but we can start over by becoming friends again. What do you say Kitsumi? She was shocked, please call me Kakin again. Sure, but please don't call me Deku. I don't think I am a Deku anymore and I want to leave that in the past. She nodded, I am sorry for that, I couldn't spell properly when I was younger and I thought Deku was a cool nickname. But I am still calling you nerd. Adding her on the head, don't worry, now we have to eat breakfast, then I am going to exercise, and to be honest, I think nerd fits better than Deku don't you think? Nodding her head, Kak and I join. She asked while still being in the hug given to her by her crush. Sure. Breakfast table. They were eating breakfast and Kitsumi asked me a question. What is your quirk? There was a rumor started by the teachers that you awakened your quirk. Even though she knew the portal creation thing, she had to ask as it was a discussion in her school about it. I chalked on my food, but answered netherless, I won't tell you it full as I even don't know what it is. But it is similar to an RPG quirk, with some extra boons. Please don't tell anyone though, this is my trust in you. I will show you more but not today. Eh, uh, what was the portal you used yesterday? Now I chalked on my food again. With a quirk of my eyebrow, there was a question that she was trying to deny. I wanted to speak to you yesterday, but then I followed you to the park and saw you enter a portal with Maruko jumping in. Fine, after the daily exercises I get a mystery box. In those boxes I can get anything from a pen to a key. It is a key that opens those portals up where I improve my skills and level up. Can you take me to one? Sure, but I don't have any keys at the moment. Which was a lie, I had one to the heavens castle, but I was waiting to improve my stats and have more space in my shadow army, and Kitsumi was not ready for it, heck even Rumi. After we ate our breakfast and tidied up the place, I asked, wasn't auntie worried about you? Eh, uh, nope. Yep that's Kakin. I went on my phone and told Kakin something, I need to call dad, he called me yesterday night. With a nod I went to my room and called him. It took a couple of seconds, but it connected, hey, dad. Hey Aizu, how are you? He said with a gruff but friendly voice over the phone, no doubt he is taking a break from his night shift in USA. I am good, sorry I couldn't answer my phone yesterday. Don't worry, I just wanted to inform you that the company I am working for will be having a HQ in Japan, and I will be the top manager here. So we can be seeing more. That is great dad, I cannot wait. How is your time after the coma treating you? It is going great, I unlocked my quirk after waking up so it is even great. That is good to know, your chances at UA will increase too. By the way, why is your voice deeper? Did you go through puberty? I became a little frantic and replied, kinda yeah, anyways dad. It was nice talking to you again. I hope we can spend some time when you arrive here, as I did grow during this time too. Sure kiddo, I will be there in around 3 or 4 months time. See you Aizu. I'd add. With that I hunched up. I quickly messaged Rumi back, she told me that this is her number, and I asked how she is feeling after that night. Walking to find Kakan on the sofa lying down with her legs dangling from the side of it. She smiled and asked ready. Smirking I replied, just keep up with me. Bet. Some time later. 
She barely could, the running was fine, but when we were doing exercises such as push-ups, sit-ups and whatnot she couldn't keep up with my speed. Always little cack and not able to keep up with me. Dissing she replied, don't look down on me. This was my opportunity, previously Kakan and I were the same height, but now I am taller than her by a margin, but I am looking down at you, look how short you are I smirked. One day I will kill you Izuku. We will see. Let's get a drink. I walked up to a vending machine and got two waters out, giving one to her she nodded in thanks and drank. Thanks nerd. Sure, sure. I was stretching get my muscles loosen up after the exercise. I was wearing green shorts with black leggings under it, with a black shirt that kind of showed of my muscles. I still don't get why a lot of women were looking at me, but then again Kakan was probably scaring them off trying to explode them for some reason. Walking in front of Kakan by 2 meters, I continued to stretch whilst she was looking. I then saw the hero from last night. I waved at her, she somehow noticed and jumped towards me with a luna kick which I blocked with the use of my gauntlet. Sup bun bun, why so feisty today? Imagine only getting less than an hour of sleep and then having a full day of patrolling with a lot of minor crimes. Ha ha, yeah, I can't imagine that yet. A nerd, is that Maruko? Sure is, Bun Bun meet my friend Katsumi Bakugo, Kakan meet Maruko. The two looked at each other with some reason they feel threatened by each other with myself none the wiser from their observations. Nice meeting a friend of Izuku's. Likewise Bakugo spat out a little less than usual as she knew this was a pro hero. Why are you patrolling here, I thought you patrol in a different city. I ask innocently. Oh that, I can patrol anywhere as I don't have a set location such as Endeavor or Hawks. Nodding at that. So what have you been up to? Nothing, just doing my daily exercise, and Kakan decided to join me. For some reason, Katsumi was giving a death glare at Maruko who was doing the same. Eh, girls am I interrupting something? This got them out of their funk, nope tch that's what they said. Maruko then asked, when are you free? Tomorrow. She nodded, that a date then. This caused me to splatter out words with Kakan doing the same date. Duh, I told you yesterday we are going out for dinner. Hein, message me the details. She gave a nod and a victorious smirk at Bakugo. Then Kakan spoke up in this conversation, anyways, me and Izuku are going. See you Maruko. With that the ash blonde pulled me away similar to the cat policeman, I gave a wave to Maruko who waved back and continued her patrol. Bakugo on the other hand was sprouting out ways to kill the bunny and how she can cook the rabbit up, then there was me chuckling good-naturedly whilst still being pulled. The Kugo household. I took Katsumi back to her house after we finished our exercise, I guess I will see you at UA then Kakan. Don't die nerd and call me when you are going to one of those. I will see when I will get another one. With Katsumi hugging me, causing me to become a little surprised. She then left to her house and I took off at a jogging speed home. But Katsumi, third pov. When she entered her house, her parents were in front of her. Mitsuki and Masaru Bakugo both off them in their late 30s, but Mitsuki could be said to be in her mid-20s, due to her quirk. So young lady where were you last night? DCH, none of your damn business old hag. Masaru then asked interrupting the bickering between the two women he loved, so with Izuku he. This caused her to freeze up, and what? So when are we expecting grandbabies? The blush appeared on her face with some explosions coming off her hands, not for a while, I also have competition. Don't tell me Izuku is still dense, but seeing how he changed after his coma, no wonders more women want him. This caused her eyes to widen, more women, kill all women, kill Maruko, with it she left to her room. When the daughter of the two left, Masaru asked, did she mention Maruko? The rabbit hero. Do you think her competition is Maruko? They said at the same time. They nodded as a response, as they do want to see Izuku as their son-in-law. Izuku next day, date. Izuku was worried, he had a date and Rumi said to dress more formally. He used the system to buy his outfit, as he doesn't have enough yen to go and buy it, even though he discovered he could exchange gold to yen and vice versa. The exchange rate was 1g to 500 yen. So the dagger that costed him 2,800,000g is actually 1,400,000,000 yen or 1.4 billion yen. He could be a millionaire if he counted it in dollars or pounds. So he exchanged 2,000 gold into yen and came out with 1 million yen in case of today. He needs to think if he wants to buy a house or not, as UA will be implementing dorms too, but that a thought for the future. The clothes he gotten were black trousers with a gray shirt, which is rolled up showing his forearms. He bought a blazer and a tie just in case, but he left it be in his storage, he even asked Igris about his opinion, but he nodded and gave thumbs up. He looked proud for some reason oh well. Izuku cut his hair as he saw the mess he doesn't fit him much anymore, before getting changed he went to the barbers and got his hair cut. The sides were gone which were black in color, and the top of head was a messy but good looking type of hair with green tips. It looks like his hair is on green fire. 
Our protagonist will meet her in front of her house, so he bought some flowers and a small gift. After another hour of riding the train to her place, he was receiving a lot of looks especially from the female populace. He thought he heard, he seems that he is going on a date with someone soon. Shaking his head, he knocked on the door. When the door opened, his mouth nearly dropped. You look stunning, Rumi. She did, her hair was tied in a bun, a black dress that reached her knees with an opening for her tail, it has a slit on the right thigh for more skin exposure. You look pretty good yourself, Izuku. Izuku smiled at her and gave the present and the flowers to Rumi. She thanked him and invited him inside quickly. She opened the present and started to laugh, you seriously got me a golden carrot. Izuku started to laugh too, well, don't you like carrots? And a gold one should give you a boost too. Don't you know Minecraft's golden carrot? Then both of them started to laugh. Geez this is gold. She laughed at her own joke which Izuku too joined in. After calming down, there is a restaurant I want to go in, but you need at least two people to enter. Ah, that is pretty nice. We walking her by car or train. It is pretty close, a five minute walk. With both of them smiling, walking out with Rumi locking the door. Whilst they were walking they linked arms and began to talk like they never saw each other. Neither paid attention to the crowd that was watching them and taking pictures whilst they talked. Reaching the restaurant, it was a high-end place that served sushi, but there was a dress code too so Izuku and Rumi were lucky. They continued to talk, before ordering, after ordering, before eating and after eating. It was like they could never finish a conversation. During eating the atmosphere didn't feel awkward, but felt natural to them as if they were doing it for a thousandth time. Rumi was having a blast, not only didn't she have to rub her nose, but openly breathed in Izuku's scent. Neither of them ordered alcohol, firstly Izuku was 15, but Rumi was a hero and had patrol tomorrow morning. After their dinner, Izuku took Rumi to one of his favorite places in town. It was a 20-minute walk, but when they got onto a hill, Izuku produced a blanket and they both sat down whilst watching the sunset. It's beautiful. Yeah it is. Rumi was leaning her head onto Izuku's shoulder whilst he was leaning his head onto Rumi's head. Jumping in the near-death zone was worth it, this caused Izuku to chuckle. I think it was after the sun was set, Izuku took her back to her house. At the house of the pro hero, Maruko kissed him on the cheek and whispered, I hope we can do it again. Smiling back and giving her a hug, me too Rumi. He waited until she closed the door and began to walk to the train station. The shadows apparently were congratulating Izuku by clapping for some reason, he was pretty happy about how it turned out. The next day Maruko was on the news with an apparent boyfriend. It showed them walking, eating, laughing and looking both amazingly. Rumi had to call Izuku the next day to call if he saw what she had seen, they both laughed at it and said that they didn't realize that people were around them. Itsumi was gritting her teeth at this, honestly, she remembered when she was exercising with Izuku, when that rabbit woman stole her man. She just had to wonder what on earth happened in the portal to make the two close, not knowing it was nearly dying multiple times. It was 17 weeks after he woke up from his coma, and just less than 8 weeks after his coma. During the eight weeks, Izuku was doing nothing much but spar with Maruko and occasionally with Kitsumi. Going on a date each week with Rumi and going to 2D rank gates. He did not even save the boss shadows as it was pretty useless when a king can take it on and win easily. He took both girls into the dungeon each, with Maruko was to let up some of her steam, and for Kitsumi was to show how it is. He only leveled up three times during the two gates thanks to his shadows. Luckily for him he improved his skills, stealth was level 2 and fireball level 2 too, but speed became level 3. But in all honesty stealth was the one which needed to level up most so it can be effectively used. Skill. Sprint LV.3, active. Uses 35 MP to start then uses 1 MP per minute it used. The total speed increases by 45%. Skill. Fireball LV.2, active with a use of 50 MP you can use fireballs to attack. It can deal a maximum of 600 HP damage. Skill. Stealth LV.2, active. It requires 200 MP to activate and 9 MP per second to use it for a longer period of time. You become invisible to the naked eye with sound, smell, and presence erased. Continuing with the skill talk, Izuku bought a rune stone that can make him an all-rounder. A healing one. Yes it was pretty weak, but leveling that up should make more dangerous injuries heal. But the problem is that he can't heal anyone without a license legally, so he have been practicing it with Rumi whenever she got injured. Skill. Healer LV.1, active. Then heals small mostly wounds. As the skill's level increases more, healing major wounds to making an organ grow back is possible. The current speed is slow 30 mana per second. Rumi actually recommended him to UA which was a surprise which he took. It was a day earlier than the normal exams so there won't be many people, but being a participant you needed to be recommended by a high-ranking hero or from a really wealthy family such as the Aoi Rosus. 
So with Maruko next to him, they walked into UA. Before the coma Izuku would have definitely have a fanboy breakdown just being here, but now he had a smile. He and Rumi continued to talk about everything and nothing with people recognizing both of them from the media. Even though Rumi is 20 and Izuku is 16, not many people actually call her a cradle robber, as in honesty, Izuku looked like an 18-year-old. UA was a massive school with the main teaching facilities and a four-tour interconnected building. They walked into a gym and continued talking. Izuku checked his stats just to reassure himself, and he was happy with them. After the job change, he collected 168 additional points with the 15 he gotten during the gate 2. Though the only reason he is probably concentrating on intelligence was to increase some MP as it is low. He thanked the gods that he received 600 MP, as adding 1 point to in gave him 5 MP. The reason behind it is when a Shoto get hit or destroyed they don't die they regenerate, and mana is used to heal them up, though the necklace from St. Peter was useful. Though the save shadow and extraction increase randomly, which is confusing for Izuku. Now for the foreseeable future, his goal is to increase the levels of his skills which increase mainly during gates. Status. Name. Izuku Midoriya. Job. Shadow Monarch. Idol. The one who overcame adversary, plus one. Level. 54. Fatigue. Zero. HP. 13,500. MP. 2215. Strength. 155. Agility. 130. Sense. 120. Vitality. 160. Intelligence. 217. Remaining points. 0. Physical damage reduction. 12%, plus 32%. Physical pain nullification. 17%. Skills. Passive. Unknown, max. Muscularity, LV.1. Advanced dagger arts, LV.2. Advanced Spear Arts, LV.1. Active. Sprint, LV.3. Bloodlust, LV.1. Fireball, LV.2. Vital Strike, LV.2. Stealth, LV.2. Dominator's Touch, LV.1. Spear Throw, LV.1. Healer, LV.1. Dob Specific. Shadow Extraction, LV.1 and 4085ths. Save Shadow, LV.1 and 4065ths. He looked around and saw a lot of recommended students, including himself only 30. The people they came with are people like Endeavor who was eyeing him for some reason. There were a couple of Herios in the top 50 and some influential families too, but one who can give Izuku the run for his money, was probably a bold hair kid. Then all became quiet, a mouse thingy that walks on his hind legs came out, it was Nezu the headmaster of the school. Hello everyone, am I a dog? A mouse. I am Nezu and welcome to the recommendation exam. This exam will be split in three portions, a written, practical and an interview. So please can the recommended students walk through to the next area. Maruko then looked to Izuku, don't fuck the interview up, I know how blunt you can be with people you don't know. Fine, I will try not to mess the interview up. Good luck though, even though you don't need it. Hi hi, thanks bun bun. Izuku walked forward with the rest ignoring the other people looking at the duo, only thinking why only the interview portion. Written exam. The examiner was ectoplasm, with his clones he said, you have an hour to finish this exam. After you finish the exam please stay in your seat and turn the paper over. It will be collected after the exam and if you have any questions please raise your hand up. But the nod they got the exams. When the hour started he got a notification. 60 min 0 sec. 59 min 59 sec. The first question was some history about pre-quirk Japan. It continued on with some geography, English, maths and some quirk and hero related questions. He took 45 minutes, he looked around and saw some students stressed as they didn't finish half of the book. Izuku theorized it was to help people with intelligence quirks or even time management. Zero min zero sec. This was when the exam finished, apparently only one student finished the exam. The other 28 students were complaining that they didn't finish the exam, which he could hear complain. The next teacher present Mick came and took the students for the next part, whilst some teachers began marking the exam. Practical exam. Present Mick shouted said ok little listeners. For this part of the exam you will be subjected to a race. The race will have obstacles though so be careful everyone. There will be 6 races in total with 5 participants each, the only rules are that you cannot go out of bound and not hurt any other students. The first 5 names were shouted so they started to begin the race. A bold student came up to Izuku and introduced himself with a 180 bow. My name is Anasa Yurashi, who might you be? He stated with an exuberant tone. With a smile, let me heal you up first using skill. Healer, Izuku healed Anasa in 3 seconds, my name is Izuku Midoriya, nice to meet you Anasa. Do you have a healing quirk? 
This made a lot of people glance at him with a corner of fire eye. It is a part of my quirk, but no. My quirk is something else. Izuku said then the next five people went and began their race. I see, are you ready for the obstacle course? Still with the exuberant tone Anasa asked. Definitely, I am guessing you are prepared too. My quirk is perfect for this race. That is good. Before the coma, Izuku would have been nerding out with the opportunity of seeing a new quirk, but now thanks to his gamer's mind, he doesn't mumble and doesn't nerd out. The next five participants went off, while the ten that been were on one side panting. The two boys stood in comfortable silence when Izuku asked a question, the girl with the black ponytail, has some sort of creation quirk, probably she is using her fat cells as energy or the atoms needed to create skates or the spring boots. The taller boy, who was only 10 centimeters taller than Izuku who had reached 180 in height, blinked dumbly. How did you figure it out so quickly? I like to analyze quirks and breaking them down to the basic components. So it is easier analyzing after some time of practicing. Then the next five went. We are in the next two races. Inasa replied with a nod. It was only a couple of minutes later when Izuku and Inasa were called, the three other participants were Shoto Todoroki, a purple hair girl that looks cockily with the same smile, and a boy with straight black hair parting in the middle like the Red Sea. The god in ancient Egyptian mythology saved the Israelites from their enemy by splitting the Red Sea. They were stretching getting ready for the bang, after 10 seconds the bang began. Izuku used skill. Sprint whilst Inasa used a wind tornado. The first obstacle was a large jump where one needs to jump or get across, but the difference was 2.5 meters from each side. Izuku jumped easily and continued to his next obstacle. The next one was a monkey bar kind of obstacle, Izuku pulled upwards on top of the bars and started sprinting again. Continuing on the next one was a wall, Midoriya smirked a little and used a skill. Fireball smashing the wall allowing him to get through. There was only 100 meters to the finish line, and he used the skill. Sprint once again to gain the final result of 37 seconds. The next one was Inasa with a speed of 1 minute and 59 seconds. Todoroki came in third with 2 minutes on the dot, fourthly the boy with the split hair with a speed of 2 minutes and 39 seconds. Lastly the cocky looking girl got 4 minutes and 24 seconds, and now she didn't wear her cocky smile. Izuku lost around 150 MP which he was happy about, and it being regenerated by High Magician's Ring. With Maruko during the written exam, she was having some water and munching on those golden carrots Izuku gave her, honestly they were the best carrots out there, and oh she loved the taste. If she could, she would marry Izuku right now, but she needs to ask him out, as she can clearly see Izuku is developing feelings, but is still dense. She was enjoying her thoughts of the time spent with Izuku, and was hoping for going to a high gate with him at one point. Though her thoughts were broken by Endeavor. Maruko, you are the only top 10 hero here except me. Ah, it's the number 2, how are you? The so-called number two grunted, who is your brat? Crowning at the word owing of Enji Todoroki, I met him a couple of months ago, and we kept in contact. We even spared and trust me his punches are something else, though with the other parts with his quirk. Never mind, who is yours? She stopped not to tell him more of her crush's quirk. Heck, if she reveals that he can give anyone rune stones, villains, heroes and the HSPC will all over him. Rumi is still lucky to have the ability to use Dominator's touch, but she uses it in dungeons. Endeavor raised an eyebrow when he heard other parts of his quirk, but then mine gone to his, he is my greatest creation, Shodo. He has both parts of mine and his mother's quirks. He will beat your brat. We will see. A couple minutes later. We can see Maruko laughing her ass off with the look Endeavor was giving. What did you say? He will beat your brat, wow that was the best joke in this exam. Eyebrow twitching, what is the quirk of the Midoriya kid? Oh now you want to know. Why? TCH, he used some kind of fire, and his speed is pretty good. Smirking she answered, I won't tell you Mr. Number 2. Even in his quirk registry, it is a vague answer, but not the truth. Shouldn't the registry have the full knowledge of a quirk? Endeavor asked bewildered. Not really, they only want a basic name. If it isn't a lie it's acceptable, just look at All Might's one. It says Strength Enhancer, but look at his speed and near invulnerability. His quirk inst fully explained. TCH. With that the only two top 10 heroes stopped fire conversations and waited for their recommended students to finish the interview. Whilst Endeavor wanted to know more, possibly his failure of Shoto's twin can be in the marriage him. Interview part of the exam. Can I have Izuku Midoriya? A scruffy man asked with a grey scarf on him. Good luck Izuku. Inasa said. Thanks Inasa, good luck to you too and hopefully see you in UA. Izuku said and received a nod from Inasa. Going in the room, Izuku could see three people. Nezu the headmaster, Midnight who licked her lips and Eraserhead who is nearly asleep. Good evening, Nezu, Midnight and Eraserhead. Izuku greeted with a bow. 
This caused some surprise on the three interviewers, and Nezu started. Good evening to you too Midoriya. Before we start how do you recognize Eraserhead? Before my quirk awakened after the coma, I was interested in heroes who fight practically quirkless such as Eraserhead. I didn't have a lot of information, but I can guess the basic appearance of an underground hero. Receiving a nod, Midnight continued, on your papers, your quirk is called adaptation, but we could see different things during the race. Why is that? It is true, I can adapt myself for better situation. But the person did the exam said I have another aspect to my quirk. If I revealed my true quirk I would be a target for villains, power-hungry heroes and HSPC. Izuku explained with a straight face. Their eyes widened, as always spoke up, will you tell us? It depends if I get accepted or not and if Nezu will tell the HSPC. Nezu then answered, I am actually plotting against the HSPC. But please continue with why would the HSPC be interested in you? Damn, I don't know why I made Nezu say it, but I guess to build trust. Sighing, you know the HSPC have their own heroes right? Receiving a nod from their heads, majority of those heroes were trained by them by birth such as Hawks. I have met Lady Nagent before she was arrested and there was something off about her, I did some digging on her, and found out that she was used to kill heroes who make the balance break. Why do you think there are not many heroes with powerful quirks such as All Might or even Endeavors? This left the trio hanging. That is sadly true. Nezu stated caused Namuri's eyes to widen, with Azawa to have his eyes minimally open, I am curious though, how did you find that out? When a quirkless child is bored, they learn other skills to help their chances of becoming a hero. Smirking, that is fascinating, why do you want to become a hero though? At the beginning I wanted to be like All Might, throwing a smile in the face of danger and saving the people with that said smile. Now after I saw the real world, I want to protect my loved ones, but also the society as we know All Might is losing his time due to the injury. Midnight and Eraserhead stood up, and with the later one asked, how do you know? Tuckling, do you remember the sludge villain attack around 10 months ago? They nodded thire heads, All Might saved me before, and my stupid quirkless self had to jump on his legs, when he was jumping to ask him can I become a hero without a quirk. This got all three to listen in closely, he said no. That was after he transformed into the small might form as I like to call it, and showed me his injury. Apparently there was someone stronger than him five years ago who made that injury. The only people who could have a chance to do that are Star and Strip, but she is a hero and a massive All Might fan. Vladimir from Russia but he was in his own country and he is a hero. There are some other heroes that could do that, but it was probably a villain, only one person comes in mind. Nezu mind froze, whilst the other two listened to his every word, there was a rumor of a man who can steal and give quirks who was born over 200 years ago. But that I made a theory that, that man stole a lot of quirks at the beginning of the quirk society, and there must have been someone with a quirk such as longevity, and with a couple enhancement quirks he could still live today, he continues gaining quirks, even if All Might apparently killed him. The Zawa was too curious, how did you find out? Remember when I said I bored? Yeah with some hacking, I used the dark web and tried to figure who that man was. But the amount of people who still are scared of the Dark Overlord of the Underground is one reason why we are still fairly peaceful, meaning he is still alive. Nezu then continued, the Yakuza especially are hiding, with other villain groups, as if they show too much. That man's underlings may come to the group and take the people with useful quirks. This won't be reported as the heroes will arrest them. I just realized that what you are saying may be true. Namuri and Azawa froze, the injury and all might the fucking symbol of peace injured by that monster. Nezu, what can we do? If that man can injure All Might then what can we do? Instead of Nezu as they expected Izuku spoke up, using his intelligence to the fullest, there are multiple ways actually. Firstly, people with non-touch erasure quirks such as Erasurehead will cancel the quirks of that man allowing people with physical enhancements or power type mutants to deal with him and having long range emitters around to shoot. Secondly, if you cannot subdue him then killing would be necessary, Lady Nagent would be perfect as her distance of a kilometer or two would be useful as she won't be detected too. Thirdly, train your students with different type of quirks against them. Do inter-school training and have better school defenses if something like an attack occurs. Couldn't have said it better myself. Nezu praised, I will give you an opportunity Izuku. I am listening. Izuku said leaning forward. The three can finally see his aura as the 16-year-old was being serious, they could feel the aura was around the top 3 hero level, and even possibly leveling all mites. I want you to be my personal apprentice. This caused the other participants to blink in stupor. Why though? That was the question from Izuku. Your skills even when quirkless would be definitely useful as a hero, but even now with a quirk you are not arrogant and give perfect explanations. Your analytical mind is top-notch, analyzing Momo Yeoirozu quirk in a second, and even now when Izawa asked the question, your strategy planning was really good. Thank you sir. 
but what will I get out of it if I accept? I heard rumors that your intelligence is really high but even so. If I get accepted, why would I choose to study with you than have normal classes? Izuku countered. That is a fair point, as you are aware we are going to have dorms this academic year. You will continue your lessons with your class, but you will learn other skills with me. Hacking, analysis, leadership and how to deal with officials as with your aura alone, states you are powerful, so you will be probably talking with people such as the chairwoman of the HSPC or high political powers, that can ruin one sadly. That is a fair counter-argument. Especially with talking to people, as currently I can easily offend someone without knowing, that is why Maruko said good luck with the interview. However, even so what will be your gain in all of this is this is not an everyday opportunity. This shocked the two pro heroes to the side of Nezu, not only Izuku was arguing with Nezu peakfully, but also isn't afraid to say his mind, that was probably why he mentioned offend people easily. Ahaha, simple. You are not afraid to say your mind and opinion. You can see the black, white and grey area of heroics, and conversing with you has been enlightening. Additionally, having someone to fill in my shoes when a time comes when I am not available is a reassurance. How about we talk in private, as I want to show you more of my abilities. I will show them to my teacher eventually. Izuku offered. Perfect. Midnight, Eraserhead please can you get Hound Dog and continue the interview without me. With that the two left with Nezu standing on Izuku's shoulder to a separate room. Id, did they just leave us? Namuri asked. The better question is, why did Nezu decide on an apprentice? Azawa countered. But the mouse god and soon to be god. They went to the headmaster's office where they sat on the opposite sides on the sofas. T. Nezu offered. Yes please, I will message Maruko quickly that it will take a while. Nezu agreed and Izuku messaged Maruko that he is speaking to Nezu. She replied that she will wait anyways. Taking a sip of the tea Izuku replied, ah, delicious. Would you want cheese? Izuku smirked but said, what is your favorite cheese? This confused Nezu, it is Gorgonzola Picante, why? Going to his shop option, he bought said cheese, there you are gorgonzola picante. And handed 5 kilograms of that cheese to Nezu who had sparkles in his eyes. Um, is part of your quirk in space-time inventory system? Yes, but firstly is the room silence proof? It is, also there are no cameras only sensors due to some meetings that happen here. Good, that part is the shop option. Anyways at first I thought my quirk was an RPG quirk like in the games where you play. I then figured out that I can receive keys to dungeons where I kill the monsters and level up. This caused widening of Nezu's eyes, then he caught something, what is it now? I recently had a job change quest, I was in a dungeon where Maruko followed me due to her interest in me. I received my job there which was Shadow Monarch. Shadow Monarch? Nezu asked confused. Let me show you. Come forth. Then behind him Igris, three mages and ten knights came out, spooking Nezu out. After I kill the monster, I can turn them into my Shadow Soilder. I haven't been in any high-ranking bar too, and only on my second one I gained the job. This isn't my full army, but it is some of them. Duo, so interesting. How strong are they? The knights alone are C-rank so far, but together can take even a low A-rank down, the magicians are B-rank, but are used as long-range support. Igris is my highest so far, he is bordering the high A to S-rank. The dangerous thing is that they can even beat an S-rank, if I give them the mana required to regenerate. Izuku then said to them, thanks for showing up guys, I will call you when I need you. With a bow from each of them, they returned to Izuku's shadow. What is the mana you speak of? It is a form of energy that I have, it also powers up my skills such as fireball and the healing skill I recently got. I have one skill that is a form of telekinesis that doesn't require mana too. Earlier you mentioned that the villains, power hungry heroes and the HSPC will want you, why? Simple, remember when I told you I have a shop option. Receiving a nod, I can buy rune stones or simply put, quirks which some do require mana, but some don't. This caused Nezu T to drop, luckily Izuku used skill. Dominators touch to levitate it and put it on the table. What skills do you have and I am sure not all skills were gained by the shop. That is correct Nezu, I have 14 skills. 4 of them are passive, 8 of them are active based ones, and 2 of them are job specific. The two job specific is shadow extraction and shadow storage which is pretty self-explanatory, I got them when I received my job. The four passive are muscularity which is helps me with when my horsepower is too low, advanced dagger and spear arts which helps me with the use of daggers and spears, lastly the unknown one which I still have no idea of how I got. The two arts were created because I use daggers and spears as my main weapon and muscularity was born by an accident. The active based ones, sprint, vital strike and spear throw were the ones I learned naturally, the explanations are self-explanatory. I bought stealth, healer and fireball. From some gates or quests I received bloodlust and dominator's touch. 
When I max a skill it can upgrade to a better skill or when two similar merge with one to make a better one. Fascinating completely fascinating, and you said you only have the quirk for only 4 months. Receiving a nod, I can see why you would want to be kidnapped or used by some parties. Don't worry, my mouth will be closed with you buying skills. I do want to know, would you be able to heal all might? If I upgrade my healing skill, I can only use it for scrapes, cuts and first degree burns. If I level up I can recreate organs and missing body parts. Do you want to be trained by recovery girl? It will surely improve your skill level. I would love that, when I get situated in my dorm I will meet her. That is great, I will mention you to her. Also wait a week for the formal paperwork to be sent to you, otherwise you are in. As for being my apprentice, we will have a couple of hours after school per week as you will be living in the dorms. Thank you Nezu, see you soon. With a bow, he left to Maruko. I am glad that the child didn't take the path of villainy, being quirkless in this society is very hard. Nezu thought internally. But Maruko. She was told that Izuku will have a talk with Nezu, and it is taking over an hour. When she sees him waving at her, she runs up to him and tries to double kick his stomach. He dodges and says, sorry bun bun that I took so long, let's get something to eat, and I will explain everything. DCH, fine but you are paying. So after an explanation, Maruko was there dumbfounded, so let me get it straight, Nezu made you his apprentice, and you told him about your own quirk. Yes, only you and him know about it. Congrats on going to UA though, when workplaces come after UA you are interning with me. Sure thing. Izuku said with a smile. I have to be patrolling the north side of Japan for a while, so I will come back just before the sports festival. Rumi informed. Have fun, but text me or call me whenever you want okay. But the small smile of pure happiness she replied, sure thing Aizu. Izuku walked her home and this time kissed Rumi's cheek. This caused her to internally jump and in real world they said their goodbyes. Jeju Island Midday. The portal opens with one ant with wings coming out, it looked around, and then entered the portal once again, which then closes. That's it guys. Thanks for watching and supporting us. See you in the next part.